But as I said, I, I, I'll do a, a bit of a sector recap for you. I see the Super Chats. I will try to read some of them. Again, because my voice apparently still works. It's amazing. I'll read a few of those for you. We'll talk about some of the big events that have happened over the last eight months, because I have been watching it. I know you might think it's infeasible that I can do this, but I can. <laughs> I can. So, uh, oh my God, I, uh, we've talked about the hacks that happened that really resulted in nothing other than Chud Buds getting shut down, Post is still around. But really, what was the, the big beats of the year? Outside of, you know, mainstream news, but the sector news. Well, I'm sure you've all noticed. Of course you haven't, because nobody pays attention. Who gives a shit about America First anymore? America First? Nick Fuentes and Ralph have had a big breakup. Oh, it's so sad. Tragic. Cozy numbers are plummeting. Nick is running around. Now, I think the last place we left off with uh, Nicholas Fuentes. Let me see if I've got a picture. Can I put a picture of him up? There we go. Heartbreaking chat. Now, I, I'm sure you remember this. This was one of the top relationships of 2022. Two beautiful gay men in their interracial relationship. It's the modern age. Nobody should feel ashamed. They were meant for each other. Nick was going to be his campaign manager and help Yeezy. Going to help Ye become president of these United States of America. Flew out to California. is a big deal. Real big leg up for a Nicholas. And he needs a leg up because the motherfucker's short. Don't worry, Nick. You'll probably be taller than me by the end of this. It's more of my uh, spinal cord disintegrates. But I'm still taller than your little midget ass right now, so I'm going to keep those short jokes coming. But there he was with Yeezy. Took an insane black man off his medication. <laughs> and then made him do puppet shows for Alex Jones. Really great for a presidential campaign. I'm sure it genius strategy. Well, it turns out, through all the leaked information that's come out, that Nick basically was hanging out in an Airbnb for like four months doing nothing because Kanye fired his ass after making him look like a fucking buffoon in front of the entire world. Who would have thought, huh, even if he is off his meds and a bit, you know, insane, he probably doesn't like being made fun of by literally everyone and probably thought Nick was primarily responsible for all of that. Now, the wild part of this story is Nick and everybody else treats it like, oh, well, Kanye's a joke now. We don't care about Kanye. You remember? You remember Beardson? Beardson Beardley? The little the little leprechaun gnome of uh, Cozy and America First? That dude, like, dedicated himself to buying uh, Kanye West gear. Shirts and shoes and pants and chains and CDs and everything. It's like a little fangirl. Doesn't do that anymore. Kanye kicked his ass to the curb. Of course, that was a, the start, not the end, for all the bad news for poor little Nick. Because Nick had to deal, and I kid you not, with the most terrifying thing you could probably imagine. A time-traveling pedophile. Allegedly. I should say allegedly, because I don't want Ali Alexander digging my corpse up to sue it at some point in the future. Now, allegedly. <laughs> this is so fucked up. <clears throat> The kind of thing implodes. America First has to deal with the fallout. Nick isn't looking too good. It's not looking so great for him. Their numbers are diminishing. He's getting made fun of. So what happens? All this information gets leaked by Milo Yiannopoulos. Now Milo, who's been in this game forever, somehow <laughs> snaked them. So uh, Milo gets a... Like, this dude becomes a part of the Kanye West presidential campaign. Makes like $40,000 through billings. Gets a bunch of like you know, uh, shoulder rubbing, uh, meets a bunch of people. It's looking great for him. And then he bails, right? He dips out before all the negative press just berates and hits Nick. And then once it's done, he pops back in. But Milo wanting to enjoy, you know, the corpse of uh, America first mounted on his wall, decides that he's going to start a campaign against Ali Alexander. One of Nick's close confidants, somebody that Nick uh, hubnubs with, Somebody that does favors for all the AFers gets in their accounts restored. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what the allure of Ali Alexander is, but, you know, whatever. Ali Akbar, whatever his name is, he's got multiple names. So Milo starts dropping information. Turns out there are numerous allegations from young men saying that Ali Alexander touched them in their no-no naughty square. Uh-oh. Turns out one of them, maybe you, uh, if you've watched streams I've done before, 
They did a stream where Baked Alaska went on an RV trip. And there happened to be somebody named Smiley aboard. And we found out the reason he was named Smiley is because the man has a penis the size of a horse's. <laughs> and he likes to show it off in little short shorts. I know he knows what he's doing. But that's why he's got a big old smile on his face. Well, apparently Smiley interacted with Ollie back when he was a kid. Like 14, 15 years old. Somebody was looking for dick pics. Apparently Ollie was out there trying to get dick pics from a lot of young teenage boys. Allegedly. Based on what Milo Yiannopoulos has posted. Now you think this would be catastrophic for an organization. You've got a group of people that are trying to be political, trying to raise money, trying to change America and do all this shit. And now you got this dude who's got like, twenty. I'm not, I'm not even kidding, like 25 allegations of trying to hit on young boys. Now you'd think in that situation, Nick or anybody in AF would immediately disavow Ollie Alexander. You would be wrong. No, Nick and everybody else decides to side with them. Going as far, I'm not even kidding, Ethan Ralph and Nick Fuentes both decide that they're going to say uh, uh, they were asking for it. That these boys were sluts and they were asking to be molested by this Sammy Davis Jr. lookalike who time travels. He talks about time traveling. I should really look that clip up so I can play it for you because I don't think you appreciate how absolutely insane he is. Let me do that right now. Should have been prepared. Terrible. I don't know. Chat, as I'm doing our little recap here, do you want me to find the Ollie Alexander clip of him being a time traveling pedophile? Would you be interested in that? Shall we talk about him being a time traveler? <laughs> what a fucking horrible concept that is. How has that not been made into a horror movie? I want you to think of how fucked up and scary that would be. You're sitting there talking with your friends. What did you see, man? Oh, they made this new hostile movie? With this brutal torture scenes? It's just, it's so extreme. What about you? Oh, there's this psychopathic serial killer who rides his little tricycle as a doll? And, like, brutalizes people in death traps? And, uh, Bob, what did you see? I don't want to talk about it. What, what do you mean you don't want to talk about it? Listen, man, I watched this fucking movie about this guy when he gets mad at you. He travels into the past and he molests you. <laughs> when, when you make him mad, he fucks you in the butt when you're like a preteen. And he just does it to everybody. It was the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. It was the scariest fucking movie I've ever seen. Oh, God. Oh. Let me see if I can find the I'm absolutely insane time traveler, Ali Alexander. Of course. Is it going to is it going to let me find it? Oh, I'm so unprepared, chat. This is terrible. I've got two videos I want to play for you, and I can't find either of them. One because Knitter's not working, and the other because I, I guess Ali time traveled and fucked with the search results. I mean, some poor engineer at YouTube just got molested when he was six. <laughs> oh, he didn't see that coming. He probably did see it coming when he was six. And it dramatically scarred him. That's why these search results aren't up anymore. It's fucking terrifying. We'll get the clip. I'll get the clip. I'll play the clip. I'll find the clip. But all you need to know is that Ollie was out there doing all of this and nobody disavowed him. Which started an entire thing, a big discussion. And a big fracture in the group, because apparently Baked Alaska was friends with Smiley. Got him to go on uh, the kill stream, where Ralph basically called him a slut and said he should open an OnlyFans. Really great way to talk to somebody that went through traumatic child sexual abuse. Call him a slut and tell him they were asking for it. You know, AF really, really shoulder to shoulder on this entire thing. And at this point, I don't think Ollie's even fully been disavowed, because it, it like seemingly keeps coming up that Nefuentes associates with him. Not a good look. Not a good look. Of course, this leads to fallout where Baked Alaska, who's now gone to prison twice, once for the J6 stuff and once for the, was it Macing a Bouncer? I think he went to like a normal jail for that one. Comes out and finds out nobody in AF wrote him. <laughs> nobody cared about him. And while he's in jail, Nick Fuentes uh, cancels his cozy channel. Kicks him off. Just throws him to the curb. Of course, he's not the only one. Ralph gets thrown to the curb, too. We'll get into that more in a bit. But now they're like bosom buddies again, I guess. You know, they've been through a traumatic experience with one another. They can go down to the FBI building together holding hands. 
talking about their hatred of Nicholas Fuentes. Is they is they turn over state and federal evidence? <laughs> oh, can somebody explain to me this? I, I I've seen Jaden, who was a former AF and a friend of uh, Nick Fuentes, bring this up when he plays a clip. There's a clip of Fuentes uh, outside the Capitol on a uh, a loudspeaker, telling people to rush the barricades, to push past people, and to get in there, inciting the crowd to go do what they did. And Nick gets into no trouble for it. Never charged. Nothing happens. But other people, in fact, wasn't it the leader of the Proud Boys that he just got sentenced to, what, 17 years? I'm pretty sure I saw, like, an old grandma get, like, a year and a half. Yet somehow Nick's on tape, on tape, telling people to rush the barricades, to fight security, to get in there. Nothing happens to him. A little bit suspect. Got me, got me thinking a little bit. Got the noggin jogging a little bit. What's going on here? What's going on here with this AF organization? that seemingly can be involved with illegal acts where the leader never gets in trouble, and he's shoulder to shoulder with an alleged pedophile who, I guess, seemingly molested like 25 gripers, and nobody cares. They blame the gripers. Oh, you were asking for it, kid. You deserved it. And yet, somehow, this is the person that's going to save uh, the future of, you know, the future of America. This guy. This guy that looks like he wants to kiss Kanye West on the lips. Give me a kiss. Right on the lips. I don't know. I'm starting to get a feeling that maybe, maybe, this is a fucking honeypot. Chat, does it make you think a little bit? Hmm? Does it make you think a little bit? Maybe this is a fucking honeypot organization? A little bit of a honeypot organization doing some things they shouldn't be doing? Now, I don't want to make it seem like uh, it's just Nick out there uh, doing terrible things and saying terrible things. Well, and again, we'll get to the big part of the Ralph stream, but one of the things you need to know about Ralph is uh, he went like on a six month bender and this bender happened to coincide with around the time Chud Buds got, you know, hacked. And one of the things that happened to Claire, the owner, is her nudes were found. They got on her computer. They, they, they ratted it. Essentially, they got backdoor access to her computer, found some uh, naked pictures on her computer. Or maybe it was her phone that she'd sent her husband. And I want you to listen again. This is Kind of during the buildup to Milo Yiannopoulos talking about how America First has a pedophile problem. Listen to what Ralph says should be done with the naked pictures of this woman. Just because I think people forget this particular clip, so I think it's good. Just a refresher. By the way, I completely avow sending classmates of her kids um, all of her nude pictures, um, if that's legal. <laughs> <laughs> make him then known. Don't send them directly, but just make them known. I don't think you can send them directly. I think that's illegal. So Ethan Ralph, I, I want you to understand what he's fucking suggesting here because he, there's another clip where he doubles down on this. It says, in fact, he d definitely wants to do this. Um, he wants to take naked pornographic pictures and send them to children. He wants to send pornographic pictures to school children, not just her children, but her classmates, their classmates. He wants to send pornographic pictures to preteen children in elementary school as a pedophile scandal's going on, as Ali Alexander's being accused of molesting gripers. Ethan gets on there and says, let's start sending porno to kids. I want you to do the, do my bidding. Get out there and do my bit. I'm just going to replay it because I don't, you know, it's, you hear that and you're like, Duck, did he really say that? By the way, I completely avow sending classmates of her kids, um, all of her nude pictures, um, if that's legal, <laughs> make him then known, don't send them directly, but just make them known. I don't think you can send them directly. I think that's illegal. You you th uh, you think that's illegal? No, I, I could probably tell you that's horrifically illegal. I think I think that's about as illegal as illegal gets. Now I'm I I almost want to give him some benefit of the doubt because at this point he was like liquid Xanax. He was like on five bajillion milligrams of the shit, and about four thousand Modellos were coursing. He was more Modello than blood pumping through him at this point. So you'd think okay. Maybe he's so fucked up in goofball land, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But no, he doubles down on it. Doubles down on it. So you've got this organization, again, 
because Ralph at the at the time was still part of Cozy. You could say he's not part of AF, but he's definitely part of Cozy. He's friends with Nick. And they've got this, this I think Allie Alexander's like 30 or 40, this 30 or 40 year old man constantly hitting on teenage boys, allegedly, according to Milo Yiannopoulos. Again, allegedly are everywhere here. Uh, doing that. And then this woman has her nudes leak, and you've got another person at Cozy, you know, uh, not just blaming victims of Ali Alexander saying they deserved it, they're sluts that wanted it, but also saying that uh, you should start sending out nudes to, to classmates, not even people related to this woman, just random children at the school you should start sending those out to. Now, I don't know, you know, we've seen Ralph kind of descend in his zanny spiral, which took place for about six months on the internet after I left, which would have been great content, let me tell you. But, you know, he got this, you can kind of see him here, he's a little spooked. I like to call this zanny fever. This is the, the ghost of Modelo's are haunting him. He doesn't really, he's looking around. He's checking his, the perimeter. Let's, let's one more time. Oh, where this, oh, I heard something. What is that? Is that the police? Does Modelo's are talking to me? I don't know what's going on. He's a little spooked. A little spooked. I'd be a little spooked, too, if I was advocating creating a, a, a group of, well, advocating that people essentially engage in probably one of the most illegal acts they could uh, that will get you beaten to death in prison. Not really high up on the popularity list. You know, what are you in for? Murder. How about you? Oh, I stole some shit. How about you? Oh, you know, sex stuff related to kids. It's a great way to get killed and shanked in jail. But of course, good old Ralph, he doesn't care. He's got that heat. Look at him. He was, I, I ain't scared, bitch. Memphis tan. <laughs> oh. All sorts of crazy shit going on with our boy. What has Ralph been up to? Well, he went into a bit of a spiral. Had a little a bit of a, a domestic with his family. His wife left him, took the kid. This is the second time <laughs> this has happened. Went on a zanny spree. A long, long-lasting, six-month-long, seven-month-long zanny spree of Modellos and zannies. Finally culminating in Nick Fuentes saying, I don't want your drunk ass showing up at one of my events and embarrassing me. And that's when the, the war started. And what war are we talking about? Well, of course, it's the Ethan Ralph versus Nick Fuentes war that we all knew was going to happen. We knew eventually it had to happen. Now, you got Nick out there. He's trying to recreate his image right at the uh, the height of this. This happened within the last few months. He's trying. He's out there. He's doing stuff. He keeps going on different shows, and it's not working out super well for him. Because you've got to understand, every time Nick Fuentes goes on to a new podcast, whether that's uh, Sneeko or Pearly Things or Fit and Fitness or whatever the fuck they're called, every time he goes on, there's some new news article or somebody just basically, <laughs> they repeat this back to him. Man, I am not gay. I have relationships with women. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. Because they're baffled. What does that mean, Nick? What did you mean when you told people that having sex with women was gay? <laughs> He's struggling through it. There's nothing funnier than looking at Nick Fuentes surrounded by like a six or seven uh, fucking six foot five black guys and a bunch of black women all looking, just staring at him as he tries to explain his political beliefs and talk about how having sex with women is gay. So Nick's out there, he's doing his thing. He wants to hold new events. And you got Ralph, who is just so fucked up, he's incoherent. I mean, it's just disaster time for Ralph. It, it was a really rough six or seven months. And Nick uh, sends him a message, Hey, uh, Rage Pig, don't fuck my event up. Could you try not to vomit and shit yourself? That would be a great help, please, for the love of Christ. It's so fucking embarrassing knowing you. <laughs> Could you just not fucking embarrass me? And Ralph, being the reasonable person that he is, declares total fucking war. It's a jihad against America first. And he's and he offers something, I, what did he call it? A-log amnesty? Which basically means stop picking on me. He convinced the, he put out an offer. What a great offer. Hey, stop picking on me. You guys, you guys are being real mean. Stop picking on me. If you can stop picking on me, um, I'll stop threatening to murder everyone and dox everyone. And this lasted two weeks, three weeks before it went down the, the shithole. Before <laughs> before he's uh, popping zannies and drinking again. 
and starting fights with everybody. And he went after Avon Chartsdale, which was like his biggest donator. This guy would religiously donate to Ralph, defended him, kissed his ass. Then he goes on stream and basically says, I know what you look like. I know where you live. I'm going to post pictures of you. I'm going to post your name. I'm just going to fuck with you on a personal level. <laughs> it's just, it's a big old fucking spiral. And poor Ralph, he's, he's kind of out there on his own now. And I don't mean just like domestically. I mean, you know, whatever. His personal relationship didn't work out. The wife took off, took the kid. I mean, like co-host wise. He's got like, there's nobody left. They've, they've all kind of fucking disappeared. He's, he's driven them all off. Now he's literally left with people that used to fuck with him and troll him are the only people to come on his show. And I'm pretty sure they're just seeing how long it's going to take to drive him over the edge. It's like a long con. I mean, you remember Bibble, right? Let me give you a, let me give you a quick refresher course on our little boy Bibble. This was a co-host of Ralph's who was uh, around for quite some time. One of the, the great medical team that works with uh, Mersh and uh, uh, Nurse Pole and Dr. Ralph. I'll give you a little refresher on Bibble, the D&D Lord. Now it's time for the counterattack, and we're going to keep going at you until you know what's going to happen. Some some fame seeker is going to go out there, and they're going to try and get a picture of you, Jim. Some fame seek, somebody who wants to be famous on, on the farms is going to go out there and snap some candid photos of you. I don't want it to happen, but that's what's going to happen. That's what happens when enough people get on there, enough people get in the chat, they all rile each other up. You know how these fucking schizos are. I don't want it to happen, but that's what's going to happen. They're going to go out there. They're going to take pictures of your wife out in the front yard. They're going to try and take pictures to your window, Jim. Uh, they're going to they're gonna try and do something crazy. They might start up a stream and start walking around your house. They might try and press your wife out in the front yard or at her work. I don't want any of that to happen. But, you know, as long as the more this continues, the more these schizos get all riled up. And, and you know how they get, man. You know how they get. All you got to do is just, you know, post a letter of apology on your Twitter, go on your stream, say that you lost – say that we won, and then delete everything and never come back. That's all you got to do, and we'll stop talking about you. And the schizos will forget about you like they always do. So you see, but what's going to happen, and Jim thinks, oh, well, I'll just disappear. This is what I've always done. When the heat starts to really get turned up, when the schizos start to really get riled up, I just go away. We're still going to talk about you. We're still going to talk about you. We're going to have a daily Medicare watch. A daily Medicare watch. That was uh, that was one of Ethan's close co-hosts, Bibble. Bibble, by the way, interesting fact. After he goes on this tirade, Jim, you need to apologize. We're we're gonna knock on your windows. We're gonna press your wife in public. Fun fact: uh, Andy Warsky and PPP over at the Kino Casino decided they were gonna dedicate a show to Bibble. They're like, "Hey, Bibble, uh, we we know who you are, I guess, uh, and we're gonna do a show on you because it's funny." And now Bibble disappeared. Wow, that's so weird. It's so weird that Bibble was there gleefully talking about uh, people uh, sneaking around my house and trying to break in. And the moment somebody says, hey, I know who you are, he suddenly vanishes. Bibble's no more. He's poofed. It's like, it's just just disappeared. It's an unsolved mystery. I wish, is that show still around? Are they still doing that on Netflix? Maybe we can get a Bibble episode going. Find out what happened to Bibble. Where's the mysterious disappearance of our boy Bibbles? How will we ever play our games of D&D without our bibbles? Well, it really makes you think. I gotta say, you know, health-wise, I've sure taken a hit. But boy, oh boy, all the people I was laughing at have really been stumbling over their asses for the last fucking six to seven to eight months. AF is pretty much a, a joke at this point, known for being full of pedophiles. Uh, Ethan Ralph's life has devolved into gutter trash. A bibble has run for the hill. Nick Fuentes... Uh, basically is a laughing stock. Uh, Power Chat's uh, kind of imploding as Louise and Baked. I don't know what they're doing with it. All I know is I, I keep seeing streams of them kissing uh, transsexual men. I don't, is that a, I don't, there's something really weird with America First. It's like a beard. It's like a beard for sexual de degenerates who talk about being uh, virtuous Catholics and conservatives and wanting to fix America, but really, they just want to have really steamy, hot, gay sex with each other, and they just can't cope with the fact that that's what they're into. 
Live your best life, boys. Come on. What what are we worried about here? It's time to just, it's time to embrace it. You're all really, really gay, and we all know it, and it, that's okay. Nobody's judging you for it. Louise, Bate, Beardson, Nick Fuentes, uh, Dalton, our little dancing Dalton, the Michael Jackson impersonator, Wolves of Root. Even Ralph, who had uh, his own leak happen, <laughs> where they found the letter that he had addressed to a man, a gay love letter, talking about a four-year relationship. Let's just, let's put the cards on the table, boys. It's time to come out of the closet. I think everybody in chat can agree. Chat, can you agree with me? Is it just time for them to live their best life? Should we do a poll? Let's do a poll. <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, I'll... I'll add the no option. Nobody's going to choose it, though. All right, there we go. It's time It's time we just go for it. Is it time for the entire organization known as America First, Cozy.TV, to come out of the fucking closet because nobody believes it anymore that these people are straight? There isn't one that has a functional relationship with a woman. Nobody could keep their marriage going. Nobody could keep a family unit cohesive. It's just a bunch of dudes that seemingly play grab ass with each other over and over and over again while baiting idiots into getting arrested for federal level crimes. So is it time? Is it time just to come out of the closet and suck that dick publicly? There's nothing wrong with it. We all accept it. All right. It's, it's okay. It's fine. Nobody's judging. Nobody's judging your, your desire to huff cock. I mean, you know, you got a, a case in point. I said that uh, the people that used to make fun of Ralph are now his co-host, King of Paws, now a co-host of Ralph's. Uh, we've got King of Pole, Outline Hunter. I think he's in chat today even, going on Ralph's stream repeatedly. I mean, the signs are all there. This man literally begs for dick pics, and he was accepted into the warm embrace of Cozy. <laughs> Nick, Nick welcomed him with open arms too. So let's just be real. They're all gay. They're all gay, and they refuse to accept it, and I'm sick of pretending they're not. I think we're all just sick of pretending they're not. I'm looking at this poll result, chat. 92%, that's a pretty overwhelming majority. 6,000 votes, 92% of you. All pretty much in agreement. It's like 5,400 people. It's time to live their best life. It's time. Oh, man, these fucking people. You know, I look back to that first debate that I had with Nick Fuentes back in the day. This is when uh, when our, our boy, Alberto, uh, <laughs> TND Alberto, was out there. He was part of He was on Cozy. You know, he was friendly with all the people over at AF. They weren't uh, hating him just yet. Hosted a stream, a big debate stream. All the Groypers are watching. They're all riled up because, how oh, dare Jim say that Flagging down people is wrong. And I remember. I remember sitting on that stream. And I remember how it went and looking at those poll results afterwards where they got blown the fuck out. And now here we are. Oh, it's been it's been a, a year and a half almost. Since that uh since that little debate. And everything is just a trash fire for these people. Just a fucking trash fire. I mean, I thought criminals were based. That's what I was told by Hitler 2, 3, and 4. But now Hitler 2, 3, and 4 is trying to tell me that um, dressing in trash bags and voting Kanye was the way to go. And, um, you know, try to fuck over Trump. <laughs> and uh, uh, posting up uh, creep shots of Jaden repeatedly on his, uh, on his account. You know, all, all this, uh, this kind of imploded on him. Who would have thought these two, these two, this iconic duo would have broken up and Gone their separate well, very sad. It's very sad that this went this way, but there it is. I mean, that's the start of it. And somehow I'm even even as my body literally implodes on itself, maybe God's keeping me around just to watch the implosion. And when they close cozy, that's what I'm just gonna croak. Maybe that's what it is. I, I mean, I'll take it. Thank you for the extra time. <laughs> but just just watching it devolve. Because now if you go over to Cozy TV, you're gonna get 
I don't know, like 100 viewers watching shit? Nobody's watching anything over there anymore. You gotta watch Wurzel Root get fatter? You gotta watch Beardson get shorter? You gotta watch Nick get gayer? Like, what's, what's the appeal? What are you watching for? Not a lot going on. And Ralph has spun off onto his own thing over on Rumble, trying to do the A-Log amnesty, but it blew up in his face, kind of, because now he's going after everybody once again. I don't get it. I thought the whole point was he was going to go after AF, but then uh, started fighting with the A-Logs once again. <laughs> Truce lasted a whole fucking day and a half. Really good. Really fun. Let me put my little pudding back up. I missed my, I missed my little pudding. What the fuck? So not, uh, not going great over there. So what else is happening in the sector? Well, Kino Casino still going strong. You know, I've seen a lot of hate for them, mainly coming from AF people, uh, Ralph in particular, uh, a couple other people here and there. And I was like, why, why are they so, why are people so mad at Kino Casino? What about it? You know, Aston and Andy, are they so fucking mad about? It? You know, then I watched a couple of their kick streams. Now, I don't know how subscriptions work over on kick. I'm assuming it's kind of like Twitch, right? Where it's like five bucks or something. And I, I unless I misheard them, I think they have like 2,500 fucking subscribers over on kick, which is insane. If it's $5 a subscription and they have 2,500 subscribers, they are rolling in fucking money on top of uh, all the other extra shit, you know, the donations and all the other extra shit they do. They're, they're killing it financially. And then you've got Ralph trying to do a log amnesty and go after AF. This is his big moment to shine. Struggling to pull in $300 a stream, watching Aston and Andy pull in a ridiculous amount of money. It's insane. So I'm, I'm going to guess that's where the ass hurts coming from. Not hundred percent certain sides have changed. Streamers have jumped off and uh, done different things here and there. You know, I'll let you in on a little secret. It's a little uh, cyclical thing that I've noticed has happened anytime a niche topic pops up on the internet. Kind of happened with um, internet blood sports. But generally, this is what happens. A novel concept is introduced. Uh, three or four streamers or groups of streamers will put out a, a larger show. They'll get, um, you know, uh, the bulk of the money, the bulk of the viewership. Then you'll have your medium streamers. They're around 1,000 viewers, maybe. And they make a decent living. And then your smaller streamers, and they make, you know, a good pocket change. They've got a loyal audience. And so this new hot commodity is out there. Let's say it's um, Internet Blood Sports. So when that was going on, you had like Andy and Tonka, and Failure. You, you had a different, all these different shows. And for about a year or two, it'll be pretty popular. But then the infighting starts. Then everybody starts going after each other. Because either the initial topic is passed or animosities start to pop up or personalities rub against each other the wrong way. And so shows start to kill each other off. At the same time, you've got a group of people in the audience that are like super parasocial. Now these aren't like, you know, these aren't donators or fans. These are people that probably like have hand-drawn wall posters up for the fucking host of the show that they watch. But that, that parasocial relationship twists and it turns as time goes on. And they get angry. They get mad. Because they're going to do it better than any of these fucking shows is going to do. So as time goes on and these shows start to implode and fight with each other, you've got this small subset that's going to show everybody how it's done. And so they, they go about destroying these shows. And then they start their own shows. And they're boring as shit. And nobody watches them. And then that entire topic, that novel approach, that, that small little genre, is dead, buried, and gone. So I don't know what you would call the last year or two. It's not really internet blood sports. Would it be uh, 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 the, the wild run of the A-logs? You know, uh, the anti-AF arc? Whatever you want to call it. But you've noticed kind of the bigger shows disappear. Kino's Kisino's kind of held on. A couple of the smaller ones have held on. And you've got new people trying to pop up and fill that gap. And who do you have? King of Pole? <laughs> Perspectivity? I can't even pronounce his fucking name. He's so boring, I can't stick around long enough to hear what it says. You got Bibble, who disappeared into the D&D &D dungeon, never to be seen again? Oh, we're, we're about to hit a drought, is what I'm telling you. I've been watching now the last eight months. You're about to hit a drought. You've got some people that switch sides at the worst conceivable fucking moment. 
won't uh, name any names here. It's feasible. You might be able to come up with your own names on what's going on. But they chose the worst possible time. And now they're like selling Disney toys or something. I, I, I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> How do you go from running a successful stream to selling Disney toys? Like Disney collectible cards? Really? Some weird shit going on. Oh, hold on one second here. I think our poll is good. Our poll is done. There we go. All right. The poll was pretty, pretty uh, handedly one-sided. Now I know. In regards to, uh, <laughs> if, in regards to a specific subject of an individual who was angry about his name being put out there, I get it. I understand it. Had my name put out there. Had my information put out there. Nobody likes it. Everybody likes being anonymous. They like having anonymity. But I would say it's a little weird to go from uh, one group of people you could be mad at for putting your name out there. I get it. Uh, to the other group who was the initial people that put your name out there. <laughs> it's like you're running between, it's like you're a beaten housewife and you're running between uh, two husbands that beat you. Maybe choose a third path that doesn't involve Disney figurines and <laughs> kissing Nick Fuentes' ass. Because I'm pretty sure those guys hate you and they used you. And they're going to just toss you aside. I don't know, man. I know it's rough. It's a weird situation. But you got that going on. So the uh, the sector is just, it's very weird. I think Ralph is kind of on his, on his last legs, I guess. Uh, metaphorically speaking. I mean, I, I don't know where he goes from here. He's talking about, like, moving again, maybe. Is he going to go to to Cuba? Is he heading to Cuba, maybe? I don't know. Is he going to go to some South American country? Maybe. Oh, 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 it looks like Knitter might be working. We might be able to actually get the clip of Ralph reading his I'm so sad poetry. Chat, would you like to hear his I'm so sad poetry? <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go. All right, we got it. We got it, chat. Knitter's working for a minute. I gotta, I gotta take, I gotta take the moments. I gotta take, I gotta shoot my shot, chat. Let me up the the volume here. Let me get the desktop audio ready to go here. Make sure that's playing. That should be good to go through. Okay, uh, one second, chat. Apparently, we've got Christmas carolers at the wrong time of year. <laughs> oh boy, surprises at the door at Jimmy's house. Uh, just give me a minute. Give me a minute. One second, chat. Okay, all right, we're back, chat. We're back. Disaster, disaster averted. Not swatted, not swatted. <laughs> the police are too informed for that to happen. They know they can just ask for hats whenever they want them now. It's apparently, I've been door dashed. Somebody sent me some delicious McDonald's. <laughs> That's a little cuntish. Hey, hey, dude, that just had like multiple massive heart attacks. Have some McDonald's. <laughs> That's going to make you super healthy, bro. Bro, I heard you had a heart attack. Here's a bucket of lard. Eat it like a pig. Get down on your fucking hands and knees and eat it like a pig. I want to hear your heart explode. <laughs> Enjoy that Mickey D's heart attack, patient. <laughs> uh, but it's a thought that counts. It's very sweet. It's a very sweet gesture. <laughs> it's a very sweet gesture. I'm loving it. Da, 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 da. I mean, it's because I talked about Nick Fuentes getting fucked in his butt by Ronald McDonald. That's why. <laughs> That's why somebody's like, I'll get you, Jimmy. Oh, you think clowns are funny? You think McDonald's is funny? How about you eat this? Is it Big Macs? Whoppers? Whatever. Fucking hamburger. Eat it. Shut the fucking fries down your throat. We're loving it. Okay. <laughs> I completely lost track of where I was. We're good. Everything's fine. Everything's fine over at Jimmy's house. I'll have to buy the clown his own fucking... Uh, <laughs> I'll have to buy Ronald a hat or two. Unnerve me a little bit. I'll admit it, boys. In the process of quitting smoking, you got me smoking now. Enjoying a cigarette over here. <laughs> Nothing says recovering from a heart attack better than a cigarette and McDonald's. Really, it's the best approach you can take. It's heart healthy. Now, what was that? Okay, we are at Ethan Ralph. That's what we were talking about. Our boy Ethan and his slam poetry. Now, I don't know what could compel a man to ever actually read this out loud 
as embarrassing as this is. But apparently he did. It's not too long. It's just a minute and 40 seconds over on uh, uh, Kino Shea's, uh well, I was going to say Knitter account, his Twitter account, if you want to watch it later on, pulled from one of his streams he did recently. It's a little bit of slam poetry, a little sad poetry. I want you to get your mindset mentally prepared for this, chat. Remember back when you were like 12 and you had a crush on somebody, but they didn't like you back? So you got really sad. And you had all these things you wanted to say, but of course you had common sense, so you never wrote them down and gave them to that person. Well, Ralph decided, here's a good idea. I'm going to read this in front of an audience that likes to fuck with me. <laughs> I'm going to read my sad uh, preteen poetry out to the audience. Now, I'm not sure, is this Ode to Piggy? I'm not sure what the name of the fucking poem is. But we're going to listen to some of it. So prepare yourself. Put yourself in that mindset, heartbroken 12-year-old. Make sure I've got the audio ready to go for desktop. There we go. Let's listen to this. This is the master of the written word. If you remember back to when Ralph and I first had our falling out, he wrote uh, some really hard-hitting articles, Smoke in the Fire or some shit, about me that we read on stream. So this is coming from that literary genius. Here we go. I'm, again, I don't know the name of the poem, but he's going to read it for us. I'm excited. Good music choice. He's just preparing himself. I know I'm not showing the video. You just need the words. They touch the heart. I know it's ironic. <laughs> they touch the heart. This is the poem I wrote to my wife about a month ago. This is the, okay. Hopefully the audio is coming in clear for you. This is the poem he wrote to his wife about a month ago. I said, I don't know what to do or what to say. I think about you every second of the day. If I should die before I wake, I pray to God your life be great. Woo! Oh, God. I got some tears in my eyes here, guys. Oh, you know, nearly dying didn't make me cry like a bitch, but this is some heart-rending stuff. Roses are red, violets are blue. I love you, bish. I don't want to divorce you. The, the ground is flat. The sky is high. I don't got nothing to rhyme with that. I'm just so sad. Is that about the level we're at here, Ralph? We must be separate for a while, but all I want is you to smile. Our love was great and grand and rough. But I know it made you tough. <laughs> this is, this is fucking awful. I never want to let you go. Life has told me I have to, though. I really, really don't want to listen. The ring you wear, I hope still glistens. No, you know what? We're going to rewrite some of this. Let's go back. I never want to let you go. Life has told me I have to, though. I really, really don't want to listen. I like the way you look when my piss makes you glisten. Is that is that romantic? Did that that rhymed right? That was illiterate enough for a horse. The ring you wear, I hope, still glistens. And if and if it already has been shed, I hope you'll remember when I'm dead. That Nick Fuentes is a fed. That I really, really loved you so. I just didn't always know how to show. And, Bish. Uh, that was the poem that I wrote there. No wonder she left you on read. Dude. I want to put you on read. What the fuck? What was that? That was like a handicapped preteen. That's not even a fully functional child wrote that, Ralph. What the fuck am I listening to? That's, that's like, that's, you make Hallmark writers seem like literary giants with that shit. I could buy a card for a dollar that's better at what you're attempting to do. Ralph, what is this? I, I, we need to, we need to really analyze this a little more. 
This is the poem I wrote to my wife. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, you, you, oh, you're like his wife, and you've fled the country when he wasn't around, and taking your child with you, and this just pops in your inbox? About a month ago. <laughs> He's like, no, baby, I'm off the drugs and the drink, and this pops in your inbox. I said, I don't know what to do or what to say. I eat shit every day. I think about you every second of the day. If I should die before I wake, I pray to God your life be great. Bish! <laughs> he needs to add more bishes in there. We must be separate for a while, but all I want is you to... Oh, no, I got it. I got it. I got a perfect follow-up line for that. Hold on. Before I wake, I pray to God your life go. be great. Go. It's, good. it's coming. We must be separate for a while. Ali Alexander is most definitely a pedophile. Allegedly. But all I want is you to smile. Our love was great and grand and rough. <laughs> but you never stopped laughing when you saw me in the buff. Bish! Four tits ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Memphis, tan! But I know it made you tough. I never want to let you go. That's why I locked you in the basement, whore. I'm coming for you. Um, well, that doesn't really rhyme. It's just anger seeping out. Life has told me I have to, though. I really, really don't want to listen. The ring you wear, I hope, still glistens. And if, and if it already has been shed... I'll murder you in my mother's bed. The end. <laughs> That's how he closes it out. Sincerely, Ralph. You'll remember when I'm dead that I really, really loved you so. I... Even though you're a horse-faced hoe. See, it's just they just pop off. They just pop. I should have been. I should have been a quote maker like Aloise from Reddit. <laughs> I, that should have been my job. I could have been on Fiverr right now selling those poems. Making relationships didn't last. Always know how to show. And uh, that was the poem that I wrote there. Whew! It's some heady shit. It's some some heady shit. We got a few more Ralph clips. Let's see what he's been up to. Just recently, and a lot some audio. Kino Gay is just desperate to spread this retarded theory that I was drunk and or pilled out all day. I did a nine hour stream and was not fucked up the entire time. I know that his paymasters at the Kino Casino uh, will do basically anything to get that across. Uh, but no, I wasn't fucked up. I wasn't drunk. Can we be honest here? No man in his right mind who's sober is going to read a poem of that caliber sober to an audience of more than none? I would be embarrassed to read that in a mirror, Ralph. Why are you reading that to an audience? <laughs> you could have sounded and behaved the most sober way possible, and I would not believe you to be sober just because you actually read that abomination to your audience. Why? Why would you do that? Now, I know uh, maybe you're unfamiliar with this chat as we're kind of, you know, finishing up on Dissector with Ethan and all of this. But you've got this guy uh, who's fighting now with uh, the Thorps, who I'm not really super familiar with. Some weird kind of alleged incest shit going on. I, I don't fucking know who these people are. But Ralph goes on to the Thorp stream with, like, the dad and the daughter and other people and just gets molly -whopped. I mean, gets just fucked into the dirt. Brutally fucked into the dirt. With no mercy. For like five or six hours straight. And he sits there and he takes it. And I cannot for the life of me figure out why. Why would you sit around for that abuse, Ralph? Why would you sit around and let them just shit on you to that extent? It kind of blew my mind. I thought, there's no, somebody's going to pull him out. Somebody's going to step in and pull him out of this. But nope. Nope, he just sat there and he took it. <laughs> he sat there and he let them shit right in his mouth, which he probably enjoyed. Unendingly. It's very brutal. It was very, it was very brutal. Jim, people coming after me in a train that don't like your wife. What you got to say now, Jim? What'd you think about that? <laughs> 
uh, should I should I threaten to stab him? Uh, and of course, you know, uh, Godwinson, if I ever see you, I'm going to stab a knife so deep through your fucking throat uh, for besmirching my mother. Or maybe, maybe spurg out a little bit? I didn't fucking watch me, bitch! You want to fuck with me? You want to fuck with my family? Keep my fucking woman's name out of your fucking mouth, bitch! Don't you dare say something about my lovely wife. Let me just kite away your troubles for you there, Ralph. Oh, the master planner, the puppeteer. Oh, Jim. Jim, you just need to get into a fight with Godwinson so he stops bodying me. Oh, the pain. It hurts so much, Jim. He's talking about things that are making me very upset right now. I'm going to stab him, Jim. Oh, Jim used to be about no money, no hats, no merchandise, no subscriptions, no nothing. No memberships. That's what he was all about. Oh, and now he would want way more than twenty thousand fucking dollars. Well, guess what? Twenty thousand dollars would change the lives of many people in this chat, me included, motherfucker. Twenty thousand dollars is life changing. Oh my god, I could pay my Stripe loan, and I could pay off the credit cards and my IRS taxes. And I can pay off my, my truck, and the cartel members won't keep calling me. Listen, buddy, I get it. Times are tough. You live in a third world country in a metal shack after running away from the country your daddy gave you. Surrounded by no one and nothing. Twice divorced. Your children have no interaction with you. They have more interaction with me. Your children wear my merchandise. I wouldn't be surprised if by the time they're like 10, they're going to call me daddy. They're going to, why am I wearing, who's Medicare? Is that my father? Why do I have so many Medicare hats? You spend all day begging for torta nickels like a fat retard sideshow. That's got to be tough. Chasing away all your big donators, banning people in your chat, getting real mad about shit. But I just don't, I, I don't have the time for it, Ralph. I'm a sick boy. And on top of that, you're just fucking boring now. Like, I've moved on to better entertainment. IP2 has you outclassed. All right, I want to watch me some gambling streams by Psychopaths. That's another great sideshow. Fish tank, good shit. You, not so much. Um, have fun in Paraguay? I don't know. Is some place in South America you're moving now to further escape child support payments? I don't I don't know. They're gonna put you in a drum barrel. <laughs> They're gonna put you in a drum barrel and barbecue your ass. Eventually it's just not gonna work out. Where are you gonna go after South America? Africa? Uh, I, I wish you best of luck with your dono scams, the unending dono scams, the three plane flights you never took, the lawyers you never used, the child support you never paid. <laughs> The, the nights at the beach you don't indulge in, the drinking you swear you'll do, but you never do. You get you get back to that. I'm sure that's going to break in the dono dollars. Did you really think, did you really think I was going to eat the bugs? Try to get me to eat bugs. Oh, senorita prostitute, you're my little hot tamale. I loved you. And if you want to know the truth about it, matter of fact, I'd have traded all the tortoise in the world for you, girl, but you broke my heart. You broke my heart. All my headmates, all of us Ralph of males living in my head were so safe. Say, Rita Prostitina, how, how could you do this to me? Fuck you, Harry! Hey, remorse, that goddamn Buffalo Bills did this. Buffalo goddamn Bills, I fucking hate them. Save you. Right, Bastardina! I loved you! I even wrote, wrote a poem for you, girl! Roses are red, and violets are blue! Senorita, Bastardina, Ralph Mail still loves you! Oh god! Oh, I'm awakened! Oh, Jesus! Oh, it's that time of year. I hope you're all ready. It's a Lonely Fucks Valentine stream, and in celebration, and I'm here to teach you all. I've come to give you the gifts, the gifts and the gears to land the ladies. All the secrets of the sectors are going to be <laughs> revealed today. I hope you're ready. We have a master in how to woo women who's going to walk us through step by step how to make sure the ladies can't ever ever escape your grasp it's all in the wrist it's kind of like uh, shooting a basketball it's really how you how you flick that wrist uh, the, the wrist and that's that's uh that's the secret behind it you got to get a good slap going 
you got to get a good slap going so she knows who's in charge. Oh, how have you been, chat? Chat? How have you been? I hope you're excited. This is going to be a very fun stream. Everybody loves when you stream about domestic violence. It's just the truth. And it's going to be that kind of stream. It's an in-celebration. And who better to kick off our in-celebration than the words of a, a martyr, a man who died for what he believed. I'm talking about... Uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm hearing creaking. Maybe a spirit's haunting my house, I don't know. No offense, Coach. Please, please have mercy on me. Please have mercy on me. Now, we've got the words of wisdom from the dating master himself, one of the dating masters. He's dead now. He died in prison. But I wanted to share it with you, okay? Here's tip number one. Get your notebooks out if you want to land a lady. Get the notebook out, get ready. Here we go. Women are like dogs. Now, what do I mean? You have to treat them like you would treat a dog. You ever go up to a dog and you're afraid of the dog and the dog senses it and the, and the dog gets up and smells the fear coming off of you and starts barking at you and snarling at you and showing its teeth and it's pissed off at you and doesn't like you. And you're like all insecure and tentative, like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, hi, can, can I get you a drink? I, I, I just want to be friends, please don't bite me. And what's that woman gonna do? She's gonna snarl at you. She's gonna look at you like, ew, creepy, ew, rough. If you're firm and self-confident, they respond. They get relaxed, see, just like dogs. You go up to a dog, you know, a big, mean Doberman pincher, right? Or, or, or whatever, some Germanic, uh, what's a Rottweiler, right? Or a pit bull, you know? You go up to that dog, you know, and he's like, hey, don't fuck with me, dog. So that's what you have to do. You have to treat women like dogs. They're just like dogs. Don't you understand? Women are dogs. Yeah. Oh, coach. Gone before our time. It's truly truly stripped away from us well before well before you could give us the gifts that would help us land a lady but luckily we have somebody else to do that now <laughs> if you're not aware a lot of shenanigans have been taking place enough shenanigans to get me to come back and do a very dedicated dating stream back in the day on streamy i did one about incels now i'm doing another one because this dude is definitely a fucking incel based upon his behavior oh it's going to be fun Lots of, lots of mirth in store for what's coming up, but I wouldn't be a hat salesman if I wasn't a whore, so I need to sell some things first. So, why not swing by medicare.myshopify.com to pick up some amazing Valentine's Day themed in celebration gear. In fact, I made a video. Let's see if I can time myself on this. Pick up a, a boys only bento box. Ooh, that looks satisfying. Eat your meals alone and in tears. And don't forget the ladies. They want one, too. Nothing says I'm desperate like a bento box with Medicare merch on it. And if you get thirsty, just, just put your rehypnol in these containers, and you're guaranteed to land a date. Aren't those adorable? It's the last thing she'll see before she hits the floor, gentlemen. And you know she's going to love it. And of course, what better way to say I love you then a note left by a stalker, I mean a gift card, I mean a Valentine's Day card, with a love spell. Maybe a sweater. Nothing says I'm single like Medicare merch. And suckers right on it. And boys, there's one for you too. Probably declare to all the ladies out there that you will put them in a dumpster after you cut their fucking throat. <laughs> oh, and there's a catnapping queen, a catnapping queen sticker. That's just me pissing on merch. <laughs> It's me taking a little tinkle on the Tinkle Princess merch. So swing by that merch store, medicare.myshopify.com, for all the exclusive deals. I think I timed that pretty well. I could have pre-recorded that, but I didn't because I'm lazy. I'm a lazy boy. Take that down for a second. Just a, <laughs> just a lazy boy. You know, before we get into the proper show, because we're going to be covering Ralph, Ethan Ralph, the love master. All right, he's a romantic pig boy, also known as bigger tits. <laughs> if only Coach Red Pill was here, maybe he could give him some life advice, some life coaching advice. You know who could use a little, a little life coaching advice right now? Senor Ethan Ralph. I don't know if you know this, but he's in Mexico. 
Likes to tell people that quite a bit. But let's get on. Let's get on to the show proper, folks. Because you came out here to learn how to woo a lady. And we need to learn from a man's man. I'm talking that real alpha male brain butter, penis pudding, vitality drinking kind of guy. The kind of guy that's got a, a poster of Andrew Tate on his wall and masturbates on stream because he don't give a fuck. The kind of guy that's willing to strong arm a woman because he knows that's what they like. Women like a lot of things, and Mr. Ethan Ralph knows what all of those are. While dogs in the street, a metal shed with a $400 rent, not enough money to buy proper food, but to eat tortas every day, all day, I mean all day long. For those of you that don't know Spanish, torta means sandwich. But apparently when you call it a torta, it becomes a magical thing that Americans can't get their hands on. Well, our man's man has put together a little primer on how to treat the ladies, how to woo the women, and how to win them over. And we're going to go step by step looking at how that is. But first we need to acknowledge that he's had a bit of a tough week. All right, he had his heart broken a little bit. Let's do a little before and after. On the left, there's Ralph uh, talking shit to people, calling him fat and stupid, how he's out there balling. And then in 24 hours, that's the end. Oh, so sad. The young lady in the picture with him. <laughs> I, can, I, can I name hostages on YouTube? Is that allowed? I think it is. It's, it's part of the, the, you know, the news. So I can say Denny. Let's say Denny. That's Denny. Denny there. The poor hostage has been released, thankfully. She's safe and sound. Hopefully Tucker can co cover that for us later. Uh, well, he had his relationship break. and It's very sad. It's no fault of his own. I mean, he is a ladies' man. He loves the women, and he treats them so well. I'm not sure what could have possibly happened between him and Denny for her to break off the relationship. We'll just have to go step by step and figure it out. It's a bit of a mystery. Like I said, he's had a bit of a tough week. You've got Joshua Moon, broke dick goddamn Josh Moon over on Kiwi fucking farms, raising thirty-five to forty thousand dollars for illegal defense of his website. Probably really pisses Ralph off because Ralph shit talks him relentlessly. And now Josh is going to be fighting to keep his website up. His different, um, I don't know what they are, Josh. I haven't really been paying attention, but he's getting fucked with by companies. Raised a bunch of money, and I know that pisses Ralph off. So it's funny to mention. So, got dumped by his girlfriend. One of his blood-sworn enemies is making ridiculous buku bucks right now. And you can kind of see that because, you know, Ralph did a stream where he begged a little bit. He kind of got on his knees and begged like a little bitch. You got to see his little picker tits flopping in the wind. You want to see, Chat, do you want to see his little picker tits flopping in the wind? There are four of them. It'll cost, you know, it'll cause gale force winds. They'll be hurricane-like. They might kill people. Okay, off the Gulf of Mexico, but I'm willing to play it. I don't care. Let them drown. I just made fun of a man having a stroke. I have no soul. Shall we play it? Shall we play him begging like a little bitch? I think we should. But do you know that I think we could raise $20,000 to have me and Jim face off? I'm not kidding. I'm not talking about in an actual arena. I'm thinking... Down at the farm, in the pig pen, Farmer Jim with his Jake Jill at all muscles can chuck corn cobs at my fat ass while I run around going, wee, wee, wee. $20,000. Now we... Oh, my God. Okay, so I would pick one judge. He would pick one judge. Just in case you're curious, this fat degenerate, this fucking retrobrate, uh, retrobate, am I saying that right? Uh, wants me to fly down to Mexico to mud wrestle his fat ass for 20 grand. I don't know why he thinks I would raise 20 grand. If somebody wants to watch a pig getting slaughtered, they can watch a video on fucking YouTube. But apparently, $20,000. Jim, you just got to sign up $20,000 to come down here mud wrestle with me. Just get naked in the mud with me. I'm a big old boy. And then somebody else would have to pick another judge. I don't know who that other person... Like, we don't trust anybody. Like, that's the only thing. Like... Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to set up, like, I, 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 I want an actual judgment. Oh. oh, you're tempting God with that one. I don't know if somebody living your life should be saying something like, I want actual judgment. I can feel the clouds parting above my fucking head just playing this clip right now. 
<laughs> Yahweh's up there, and so is Zeus. They all got together. Holy shit, Ralph. The Pantheon, as well as the, the guy who does it on his own, they're all together. They're holding hands and just charging up their lightning bolts. Let's not talk about judgment when we're Ethan Ralph. Do you think it's fair to beat a bold man with cancer? No, maybe not, but like, no, I'm serious. Jim would want way more. You're a fucking skank, bitch. Are you fucking serious? Jim would want way more. Now, I want you to notice how fucking mad he's about to get. Just focus in on his fat, fucking pudgy little face. Kick a good old look at how mad he gets at the thought that, like, he thinks he's going to come to me and say, hey, $20,000, and I'm going to be like, I'm going to drop on my knees and be like, oh, my God, blah, 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 blah. put it in my mouth. And then somebody's like, no, Jim would want more. Now watch how pissed he gets. He used to say he didn't want any money, you fucking skank. Fuck out of here, Gamergate retread whore. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, Jim used to be about no money, no hats, no merchandise, no subscriptions, no nothing, no memberships. That's what he was all about. Oh, and now he would want way more than 20000 fucking dollars? Well, guess what? $20,000 would change the lives of many people in this chat, me included, motherfucker. Now, I don't know if you heard that. I've got a metal desk, so I'll try to recreate it. But there was a bang sound. That was him accidentally bumping in. I'm not kidding. He lives in a metal shed. <laughs> Ethan Ruff, I'm not fucking with you. Ethan Ralph lives in a $400 metal shed in Mexico, hiding from the cartel. And you'll find out why later. But um, he's a little mad, but he let a little something slip right there. Let's, it's not so much that he's angry at Jim for wanting more than 20000 Listen to what he says. Well, guess what? $20,000 would change the lives of many people in this chat, me included, motherfucker. Oh, how many dollar dues can I count the way? Well, Ralph, I'm sure $20,000 would be life-changing. Hey, most people would appreciate it. But you're desperate for it. That's the difference. I mean, you are desperate for it. You've got, a, what, a $20,000 truck that you got on a 77-month lease, you stupid fuck? That's, what, $800 or some shit a month for that? Your $400 metal shack that you rent? The child support? The back taxes you haven't paid? And let's not forget about the Stripe loan where they take money directly from every super chat you get. I don't even know how you manage that. I didn't even know that was a fucking possible. You got the internet equivalent of a fucking payday loan. How do you do that? 20,000. Jim, Jim's going to want that, and then he gets mad. Hey, Jim, do this event with me, and then he starts screeching. Oh, oh, $20,000 isn't enough for this cocksucker? Are you fucking kidding me? God. Oh, yeah, 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 20 grand, 20 grand for the king ain't enough. Are you fucking absolutely kidding me? 20,000, man, dude, you're, uh, dude, I'm so close to Fed Post, and, like, I, I have to actually stop. <laughs> yes. I, by the way, I didn't even, that wasn't me. I didn't say shit to him. I hadn't even seen this clip till well after it was, you know, done and dusted. And he's, he's just, he's that infuriated at the thought of me telling him no, that he's, he's close to, he's got to have a cigarette. I made this motherfucker smoke. I mean, the thought of me telling him no was so much he picked up smoking. That's, that's powerful. I have power over pigs. Instead of St. Patrick and the snakes, I've got St. Augustine and the piglets. So poor Ralph, literally and figuratively, poor Ralph. Having a tough week. Gets gets a relationship broken, shattered heart. Finds out his blood enemy, Joshua Connor Moon, is making the buku bucks. Coming around, begging me for dollars. Sniffing in my ass like they're fucking truffles up there. And then, of course, he accidentally lets it slip. Because he's drunk and high like usual. That he's going to IFS therapy. Something I'd never heard of before. But internal family systems which is a really way of, uh, you know, interesting way of fancying up an old Tumblrisms term. Um, he has headmates. Ethan Ralph, i not even fucking joking, is going to therapy because he has headmates. Not multiple personality disorder, not schizophrenia. He has invented headmates. Inside Ralph's head right now, screaming at him in piglish, are at least 10 other Ethan Ralphs, all with different opinions, different personalities. <laughs> 
<laughs> Imagine this broke, fat motherfucker sweating to death in a metal shed in Mexico. And all he hears in his head are little Ethan Ralphs oinking at him. Incessantly, never ending. Never ending oinking. Ooh, that's a tough week. Now, I know you're thinking, Jesus, man. That's kind of fucking brutal, right? Dumped by your girlfriend, begging for money. People you hate are getting rich. You've gone psychotic and are now going to Tumblrisms therapy for some reason because you're a little girl. I mean, how could it get worse? Well, how about masturbating on uh, air? How about how about jacking off in front of an audience accidentally? You might think I'm joking. The full clip is up. This is a little bit of a playful one. I had to edit it down to make it appropriate for you know uh, the viewing audience. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to give you fucking nightmares. But I'll play it for you. It's a little you know a little inspired by another incident. I hope you enjoy it. Sound good? Random bullshit. I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. Thanks for the money, dummies. <laughs> In a minute, I'm going to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the camera's on. The camera's been on the whole time, huh? I don't even know. Hello. Uh, oops. Oopsie Daisy. Uh oh, Ethan Ralph's touching himself on stream again. Oh God. Uh, he did that, by the way, for about two straight minutes. And then notice that oh he was on he was on camera uh oh he was watching Nikki Haley he's cranking one out to Nikki Haley in front of uh, you know his audience and he's so zany looped he doesn't even notice and I don't blame him his audience is like two people one of which is a furry that probably enjoyed it how you doing Ada Wolf <laughs> why don't you send in one of your cherished one dollar donations and tell me your stupid fucking political takes but I won't masturbate for you like Ethan will I'm sorry I've got some pride so there you are. Broke, sweating in a Max or a Mexican shack, with your headmates, people making money who you hate, getting dumped, caught masturbating. So what better thing to do than to jump on air and tell people that you're going to, of course, not just come in front of your audience, but literally ejaculate on corpses. Yes, Ethan Ralph is a confirmed necrophile. This man is aroused by the dead, and he seeks to pleasure himself in graveyards. And um, they talk about, about me jacking off to Nikki Haley. I'm going to jack off on your fucking casket, you cocksucking son of a bitch. And you ain't going to be able to do shit about it. Do you understand? I'm going to come nut all over your fucking grave. Do you understand? And if your mom is dead by then, I'm going to come on her grave too. I'm, I'm gonna come all over your grave and I'm gonna come all over her grave. That's what I'm gonna do to you and your mother. And you can't stop me. I'm the best quarterback in the league. It's not against the law. Nick Rakitic told me that wasn't against the law. Nick Rakitic told me that wasn't against. Do you understand? Nick Ricada told me I could come on your grave. Nick Ricada told me I can ejaculate on your dead relative. That's what Nick Ricada told me. You know, serious accusation, really. I reached out to uh, Nick Ricada uh, before this stream. I asked him, you know, to watch the clip. And then I, I seriously asked him, did you actually give Ralph legal advice? Did you tell him he could masturbate on people's graves, that it was legal in the state of New York? And, um... Nick was, he was a little uh, fucked up over this. Um, so he made a clip he wanted me to play for you, a response to Ralph's claim that he had given him legal advice that you could masturbate on graves. And I told him, okay, I'll play it for everybody, Nick. So here is Nick Ricada's response. Oh, Mandy, well, you came and you gave without taking. For I sent you away, oh, Mandy, well, you kissed me and stopped me from shaking. I need you today, oh, man. Oh, shit. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I mixed up the clips. That's him singing to the tranny that catfished him. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. That was the wrong Nick Ricada clip. I'm so sorry. It looks like I've misplaced him addressing what Ralph said, and I played him singing a love serenade to a man in a dress. That is my, my mistake, Chad. I'm sorry. I fucking boomer Jim. Boomer Jim boomering it up. What was I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Nick, if you're watching this, you might want to sit down and brace yourself. Take the whiskey bottle out first. I played the wrong clip. I played the wrong clip. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Oh, God. But enough of the fun times. Okay, so Ralph has had a bad week. We've all had a giggle. Mersh had some strokes. Nick's out there singing for men. But let's get down to the brass tacks, folks. Let's learn how to be a ladies' man from Ethan Ralph. I mean, you've, you've watched him. We've watched some clips. Who doesn't want to emulate this guy? Getting drunk. Masturbating on stream. Zanny looping. Bottle smashing everywhere. Let's, let's go for it. Now, the first thing, when it comes to wooing a woman, and you should all take notes, this is very fucking important, is it starts at an early age. Because how you treat your mother is how you treat your woman. And if you want a happy relationship with a girlfriend or with a wife, you should have had a happy relationship with your mother. And Ethan is a master at having a good relationship with his mother. In fact, we happen to have some audio showing you what a good loving, caring son, Ethan Ralph truly is. Ethan! What? Get up! Okay, I'm getting up. You're not getting up. What time is it? Nine o'clock. In the morning? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna... I swear. You better take the dances. You slept a lot last night. Yes. Now, you might be wondering, why would mom be asking Ethan, you know, if he's getting up, but then if he's sober? Well, you know, sadly, tragically, Ethan's mother has passed away. She had an illness. And at the time, she was incredibly sick. And she had to go to something called dialysis, which is a serious medical treatment. And, you know, for the healthiest of people out there, if you had to go through dialysis, it'd be a very fucking tough time. Something you have to do almost daily, sometimes daily, sometimes three or four times a week. Uh, it's it's pretty, you know, it's pretty time-consuming. You got to go up there for a couple hours. You have to have the machine work on you. It cycles out stuff. And, of course, you know, you need support. You need support from friends and family to help you get down there to do that. And her support was Ethan. So here she is calling because she has to go to fucking dialysis. And her big, dumb, fat fucking son pilled out of his head on Zanny's. He's probably stolen and drunk as a skunk because he was shit-faced all night for 12 fucking hours has answered the phone. Let's hear how he responds to mother's request to bring her to her life-saving medical procedure. Yeah. Are you ready right now? Okay, don't start getting out of here with me, dude. It's not even hot outside. I said it's not even hot outside. Okay, I'm going to call me right here, dude. I'm on the way. Oh, God damn, eat a fucking call you in the river, man. Okay, well, then cry me a river. You either get a ride from me or you'll hitchhike. It's not even hot outside. You'll either get a ride from me or you'll hitchhike. Call yourself a fucking Uber. And I'm pretty sure he told her to suck a dick, too, in there. Pulling off a little bit of a Wayne Lambright, if I may say so. Imagine your dying mother calling you for a life-saving medical procedure and you tell her to suck your dick and to walk in the heat. The heat that day, by the way, was in the 90s. Let's hear it one more time because we really want to really want to build that foundation of how to love women. I'm, ready, I'm on the way. Oh, God damn, eat a fucking call you in the river, Okay, well then cry me a river. You want to get a ride from me or you'll hitchhike? Ooh, that's a little tough, folks. It's a little, uh, it's a little tough to listen to, I'll be honest with you. Sorry, somebody's saying my audio's coming in a little low. Hopefully that's a tiny bit better. I can't really help it. The clip should be fine, though. My dulcet tones are coming in a little low. That's called being sick yourself. Luckily, my wife doesn't make me walk to dialysis. I'm not in dialysis, but... 
Jesus, I hope she wouldn't make me walk to dialysis. What a cuntish thing to do. But that's little Ralphie. Little Ralphie and his mother. The mother he constantly talks about how much he loves her and how much he misses her and how dare you ever bring her name up or talk anything about her. And when it comes to how he treats her, how he interacts with her, treats her like shit. Treats her like the stuff you'd wipe off the bottom of your fucking shoe. Because he's a soulless monster. But of course, after your relationship with your mother, you meet women. You start to date. You get relationships. Maybe you get married. Maybe you marry a British woman who's going to become a doctor. And everybody seems to really like her, and she doesn't really have any enemies. But because you're such a reprehensible piece of shit, you completely fucking ruin the relationship because you're just scum. Even though she sticks it out with you as you're in jail for a year, running your affairs, taking care of your business, making sure your pets are fed, doing everything you could possibly ask of her, and your horrible, caustic fucking personality destroys a relationship, and you're totally at fault for it, but you just can't help yourself, right? Because you're a ladies man. And you know love you know ladies love to be fucking threatened. So you blackmail her and bribe her and terrify her. I'm just trying to decide basically how nuclear to go on my ex wife. But I saw one of her friends on the stream last night, but they were Bullshitting about my marriage, basically, seemingly at the behest of my ex-wife, who, if you don't know, uh, actually co-founded the kill stream with me. So it is pretty curious to me when I see that money grubbing bitch send out her fucking minions because you're too much of a coward to come out and attack me myself or yourself. I'm sorry. I just got to pause it there for a second. Let me just fill people in on this. Uh, this is to the best of my understanding. I could be wrong here. Uh, but Nora put her ass through college for a, an exceptionally long amount of time to become a somebody in the medical field. And you live in a metal shack, you fat fucking retard pig. So what do you mean money-grubbing bitch? How would she be a money-grubbing bitch, Ralph, if she's making a thousand times what you make when she's sleeping at night as you work 12 hours a day? Just wanted to throw that one out there. Well, I'll tell you what. I got a lot more to say, bitch. A whole lot fucking more to say. And people talk about you were paid off to come on the show that last time. You were paid off, you whore. You dirty fucking whore. You were paid off to come on that show. Because you're a trifling ass bitch. You never were worth a shit. And I hope you fucking burn in hell, you fucking whore. Is that clear enough for you? Fucking bitch. So we'll wait and see if you got the stones to show your fucking face anywhere on this fucking internet, motherfucker. I'm just trying to... He sounds a little bit angry, chat. He sounds a tiny bit upset, I would say. A little bit. A little bit, if you like. A little bit. Uh, a little bit upset. A tiny bit upset. Oh, let me just check something here. Is he screaming at her? So we'll wait and see. I'm just checking audio. Some people are saying it's coming in a little too quiet. This mess I can do. I think my mic's fucked up. Oh, God, Jim, you're fucking it up. Everything's falling apart here. I'm sorry. It's just in the presence of such an alpha buttered ladies, man. I just don't know how to handle it. A little bit, a little bit if you like. Oh, no, it's coming in fine. You're just fucking with me. We're good. We're good. I don't believe you. You're lying to me, chat. You're lying to me. Okay. So. We've established Ethan Ralph knows how to treat his mother and how knows how to treat his ex-wife, his first love of his life, the woman that stood by him through the toughest of times. you got to remember, Ralph is not a rich man. He never was. Nora had a great job. Plenty of opportunities to get a guy out there that would be willing to, I don't know, not treat her like shit. But she stuck by this fucking retard. And he was so desperate, so bad up. And if you want to know what my opinion on why she would take money from Ralph to show up on his show, she probably pitied him. Sometimes people just pity little fat piggies like him. So maybe she just felt bad. That was a mistake. So Ralph, uh, ladies man, loves his mother, obviously loved his ex-wife, his first wife. But let's not about, you know, let's not forget about the girls he's out there dating too. He's a rapist. He is? Yes. Who well, would he rape? Me. What? You're like really, oh yeah, you're really drunk. One thing. Blow my mouth. Dude. Hmm. 
Oh, that's right. Alice. Shit, I forgot about Alice. So what do we have so far here? We have Ethan Ralph on tape screaming at his mother that she's a, you know, should suck a bag of dicks and walk to dialysis because he's, a, you know, a reprehensible piece of shit. Uh, we have him screaming about Nora and, you know, threatening her and talking all this tough guy shit when she's not doing anything to him. Then we got this chick named Alice who he claims is making it all up, bunch of Me Too bullshit, saying that he got her, uh, you know, roofied and basically mouth raped her at a party. And there are, mo there are multiple clips of Alice saying this and breaking down. But, of course, he denies it. It's just more Me Too lib shit stuff that uh, Ralph is out there saying is bullshit. Clearly, there wouldn't be a pattern of behavior here for our ladies, man. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's see. Uh, is there a pattern of behavior? How about baby mama number one? Let's see. Uh, there's an old clip. Let's let's give it a listen to. Pulling the first Jenga block. By the way. You mentioned Medicare. You mentioned Medicare, and I'm literally reading his timeline, and he's, I swear to God, I guess Gator's on with Rand. He said, this never happened. Like, I don't even know where he got this from at all. He said, he grabbed his pregnant girlfriend by her throat while he was drunk and high and dragged her out of the house, what? is the claim that Medicare is making on Twitter. Well, that wasn't the claim that I was making on Twitter. That was the claim that your ex was making on Twitter. When Augusto Kinoche asked, did Ralph grab you by the throat and harm you the night when Pansu accused him of rape? To which uh, she responds, he grabbed my arm. I think there was a misconception with Gator on that aspect. He did take me out of the house, however. Riley tried to stop me because he was scared of what Ralph would do to me next based on what he had said. Uh, Ralph may use my pregnancy to get back, uh, to get him off, uh, to get him to back off. Follow up to that was, uh, he did grab you by the throat another time, though, right? That's when you did leave? Yes. When I left, he grabbed me by the throat, which is why I think T got confused of the nights. November would have been the time I left, and he grabbed my throat. So now we've got uh, the next woman that Ralph was with after the last woman. Okay, well, let's, let's back up first. First, he uh, screams at his mother. Then he threatens his ex-wife. Uh, then he gets accused of raping a woman in her mouth. And here's the baby mama number one saying that he not only, you know, physically dragged her around, but grabbed her by her fucking throat. Now watch his reaction to this, because he's going to go off on Gator, because of course this is all Gator's fault. Uh, goddamn Gator Gator. Which I don't even know, like, that's just complete what? fantasy. Like, I don't even know where that came from in the slightest. I mean, what like, the literally, fuck? they're just making up complete fan fiction. And Gator did this. The whole reason I put his information out there, now, I didn't dox him uh, myself, but I put out that he was in Carolina and that his name's Brian and all this stuff, and then Zoom doxed him the next day. The reason I did that, the reason I did that was because he was on Kino Casino, and he's like, yeah, I know for a fact that Ralph runs Pantu's accounts and this and that, like, literally just making up stuff wholesale. And I was like, okay, well, if you want to just make up shit, wholesale and try to fucking like torpedo me with just absolute lies by the way there's a lot of real shit that i've done that you can talk about you're just right. gonna go out there and just make shit up okay fuck you your information is not private with me i don't give a fuck you want to try to lie about me and fucking libel me bitch fuck you fuck your information and i'll be goddamn because if you actually did fucking say that you're looking at a fucking lawsuit goddamn it and i'm not fucking kidding at all you see how he misplaces his anger he gets angry at Gator, accusing Gator that Gator's not even in this screen cap. This, the Gator's not a part of this fucking screen cap. There's a conversation going on on other people. Gator's making shit up, but it's pretty clear what's being said there. But of course, all women are liars. Ralph's mom's a liar. Nora's a liar. Alice is a liar. Faith is a liar. You know, Harry, uh, Harry Morris is a liar when he put this out. Now, this is, uh, <laughs> this is something... I could read you the tweet, but I'm just going to let you listen to the audio. You know, baby mama number one had some, uh, you know, allegations against him. Uh, wife number one, apparently very, uh, you know, not treated very well. So what about baby mama number two, wife number two? Well, let's listen to some secretly recorded audio tape because Ralph said he doesn't threaten people. He doesn't hurt women. He doesn't do any of that. Clearly, a ladies man, this Lothario knows how to treat him. Gotta wind up that wrist and hit him real good. Yeah, yeah that ain't appropriate. And I don't give a fuck whether you're approving or not. Clean that shit up. You think you're going to 
to talk to me like this? You're not. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand? You won't talk to me like this. I understand. Do you understand? Oh, what a what a loving man. Clean that shit up. You're not going to have a million dollars. You're not going to talk to me like this. Oh, it gets better. Go ahead. You're what? Getting a towel. You're what? Getting a towel. Oh, hey, fun fact. You might be wondering, what is he cleaning up? Or, well, you know, what? what is he asking her to clean up? His piss bottles. I'm not even joking. You know, some of the clips I'll edit in bottle clanking sounds or laughs, but... He actually urinates in piss bottles. This disgusting pig you're seeing on screen pisses in Medela bottles and lets them collect at his hoofs. And then he knocks them over in little piggy rage fits and makes the women around him clean them up. That's what he's angry about. He's demanding she clean up his piss, his literal piss. Clean up your desk. You're getting what? Towel. You. I'm not going to hurt you, but I'm telling you. Oh, see, we all, it's always a good sign in a relationship when you start it with, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. But I'm telling you, you won't talk to me like this. Do you understand? understand. Please don't Do you understand? Please don't put your... Did you hear that? He said, I'm not going to hurt you. And this is hard to pick up. I tried to boost the audio of this. But she says, please don't put your hands on me again. Do you understand? Please don't Do you understand? I'm going to put my hands on you. I'm going to put my hands on you. And you're not going to stop me. And if you try to stop me, I'll fucking kill you. I'm going to put my hands on you. And you're not going to try to stop me. And if you try to stop me, I'm going to fucking kill you. That's Ethan Ralph. That's Ethan Oliver Ralph of the Kill Stream. Telling his wife, who is raising the child he created in their house together, that he's going to put his hands on her. And if she tries to stop him, he will fucking kill her. Put my hands on me. And you're not going to stop me. And if you try to stop me, I'll fucking kill you. Do you understand? Hey, quick question to all those conservative guests that go on the kill stream and talk about, you know, traditionalist values and nationalism. Talk about the uh, nuclear family and how important that is. Oh, why are you going on a stream with a man that treats women like this? I know you can do the Me Too bullshit and, oh, lip cuck this and lip cuck that. Uh, but he treated his mother like shit. You heard that. Treated his wife's like shit. You heard that. And you can hear him clearly on audio saying he would kill his wife. As she begs him not to hurt her again. What the fuck is the matter with you? And why should I listen to any of you scummy little grifting fucks when it comes to conservatism or traditionalism or anything political or anything to do with society is you bitch and moan about uh, tranny story hour at the library when you're willingly associating with a piece of shit like this. Maybe you should, I don't know, leap off a fucking bridge. I couldn't tell you what this audio is. We just hear a lot of uh, fabric moving around as she's probably running for her life, which is a good strategy. This fat pig probably can't catch her. But I think it's pretty clear what the fuck is going on here. And it's important, and I know we're going through some older stuff, but it's important you understand the history of it before we get into some more of the uh, recent allegations. Shit to you. Yeah, of course. I really haven't been saying that. Yeah, you're worthless. Pull on messes. No sex, no I mean, you're really kind of a worthless wife to be honest with you. So here's Ethan Ralph, high on pills, drunk off his ass, physically threatening his wife. She's scared. You can hear it in her voice. He's already admitted, you can hear it in the audio, that this has happened before, and he doesn't give a shit. He's going to do it again. 
demanding she clean up his piss because he's a giant fucking baby. He can't do it himself, can't use a toilet like a human male that's above the age of three. Here he is, telling her she's a worthless piece of shit as his child screams in the background. You know, the majority of the time I like to make jokes, and we do. We like to make jokes over here, have a good chuckle over here. But this is really who Ethan is. There's no excuse for this. This isn't uh, having a bad day. This isn't an addict struggling with a, a, a tough time. There are a lot of addicts in the world. A lot of people out there that are alcoholics or pill poppers that don't beat their wives, that don't uh, get accused of raping women, that don't uh, tell their mother to suck dick and uh, walk to their dialysis appointment because they still have a shred of fucking decency in them because their personal plight is a personal one. They don't use it as an excuse to bully women and to hurt them. So yeah, we like to have uh, you know laughs over here. I like to have jokes, but uh, this man is a monster. And I just want to show you how much of a monster he is by laying it out piece by piece and bit by bit. Nothing. Sure. It's true. It's true. You know, you made me thinking, God damn, that poor kid, right? The poor daughter. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. All right, let's get into this. Um, yeah, so you hear the daughter crying in the background. What, is, what does Ralph think about his daughter? You know? I mean, if he thinks of his mom like he does and his wife's and girlfriends like he does, what did he, what, how does he refer to his little, little bundle of joy? His daughter, who's not even a year old at the time this came out. 57%. The baby's crying, so you have to go downstairs. Well, bring her up here. She bit me really hard. On your titty? No, on my finger. Fuck, what a bitch. What a bitch. My little daughter is a bitch. My wife is a stupid fucking whore. They can't do anything right. She's fucking worthless. And my daughter's a stupid fucking bitch. What a guy. Amanda Morris has absconded with my child in New York City. We had an argument in the airport and no charges, of course. It was an argument on the plane. Like, literally nothing. But now she has my daughter, or she's disappeared with my daughter. I'm in New York City. Excuse me, officer. My fucking whore is absconded with my dumb little bitch. Can you please bring them back so I can beat them? I need somebody to clean up my fucking piss bottles. Yeah, that's right. She tried to run. She tried to run a year before she finally got free. She ran when Ralph went out of the country. He kept her fucking passport hidden. He hid his wife's passport so she couldn't leave him. And she ran for the hills to a family she was not really that close with at the moment <clears throat> because she basically was in a, a fight with them, living around him, being told to treat them like shit. You know like how cults will cut you off from people? Ralph does that with women. So he made sure that, you know, uh, she did not have a good relationship with her father, her sister, her mother, grandparents. Isolate her, keep her lonely in a country she can't speak the language of. Stuck watching a kid being terrorized, apparently. And she ran for it. Absolutely ran for it. And you can see when things really started going downhill. Because, you know, he's Mr. Uh, big Butts. Big Butts. Well, he's a Big Butt. Uh, big Bucks Buku Boy over here. Uh, check this out. This is uh, on stream where she had the balls to say something. You remember in the audio where he's the secretly recorded audio where he's screaming a million dollars. You ain't going to talk to me like that. Uh, this is what that's about. She asked this cheap piece of shit to buy her a video game, a singular video game, one video game. This is a guy that brags about making a bunch of money, selling merchandise, hidden goals, going out to eat fancy restaurants and smoking cigars. And his wife who watches his kid all day and cleans his piss up wants a single video game. <laughs> Check this out. Get out of here. Buy me that Harry Potter game. No. Do you want to play it? We should have a we should have a fundraiser. I have a PS5. A fundraiser. Fundraiser. If you weren't gonna do a show today, I was gonna do a fundraiser. Fundraise your ass up out of this room while I do my show. You love it. You had no content beside me. Yeah, right. I always Watch have content. Nigga, I invent show. content. Get the fuck up out of here. I'm the king of content. Yeah, you have to invent content because you don't prepare. 
why would I ever have to prepare? So I'm a walking living. Would you like to take over right now? You know, I, I have to say, too, because we haven't really got to the proper uh, thing that she said yet. Uh, nail on the head. Uh, you don't prepare and you have no content. If you've watched a, a Ralph stream in like the last seven months, it's him high off uh, his ass and drunk as a skunk with nothing to do but watch CNN. She was absolutely savagely right on this. Right now, I have a screaming baby dust. No, do you think do you think you could do it better? Is it, is you, it you that's made over half a million dollars since I got out of jail, or was it me that's done that? You can't quantify this. Uh, no, I can. I can count dollars and cents. I, I just want to know, was yeah, it you yeah. that made all that money? It wasn't Digi, bro. Where'd all the money that. go? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, we call that a kill shot. Oh, on the kill stream, that's a kill shot, baby. Where'd all the money go? That money. It wasn't Digi, bro. Where'd all the money that. go? Why am I living in a metal shack? <laughs> Why am I living in a metal shack surrounded by hungry dogs on the street? Where is that money, Piggy? Uh, it's still here. Where's your money at? I spent it. Is all it with Harry money. Morris? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's with Harry Morris. No. Why would it be with him? He has well, I mean, that's the only money you ever had came from him. Oh. Oh, where's your money? Let me, you know, yeah, where's your money, lady who cleans my piss up and uh, has to watch my child because I'm too drunk and high to do it myself? Where's your money at? I don't know. Maybe she's being that traditional uh, housekeeper that you uh, and your guests love to proclaim as the end-all, be-all for the nuclear family. But now that's not good enough. Now you're going to shit on her for it? Oh, honey, you need to stay home barefoot and pregnant. But when you stay home barefoot and pregnant, I'm going to tell you you're worthless and you're not doing enough. I'd say pick one. You know, pick pick one here, buddy. Pick one. Which way are we going to go? God, we have so much more to go over. We haven't even... I, I know this is going to sound remarkable to you, but we haven't even gotten into the fucked up shit yet. Now, we have a very special viewer tonight. I've been informed that Denny, you may remember from the very beginning of the stream, when we were just starting our little Ethan Ralph segment, the the, uh, the now and then. Remember that, Denny? That uh, yeah, Sierra there? Uh, apparently, she's watching. I've been informed she might be watching. So I'm sure this is being very educational for her on what she's fucking dealing with when it comes to Ethan Ralph. And we have so much more to go over on how to be such a great ladies man and treat women right. But first, we're going to take a small little break so I can go get myself a soda because Jimmy's voice is a little sore. And then we're going to get back into it. And uh, <laughs> you haven't seen shit yet. We haven't, we haven't gotten to the crazy part yet. This hasn't been the crazy part. This has been the, this has been the, he's a piece of human garbage part. We haven't gotten the crazy part yet. So let me put the break on. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here comes the break. Go grab yourself a drink. Take a piss. Do what you got to do. <laughs> uh, did you enjoy it? Was it worth it? Oh, we don't like the Kingdom Hearts song, Jim. We don't like the little boops and beeps. No, we don't like that. No, no, we gotta be, we gotta, we gotta give you shit for it. Okay, well, Rhythm of the Night it is. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was fun. Oh, boy. Welcome to part two of the stream. If you're just joining us, don't forget to swing by the Medicare merch store at medicare.myshopify.com to get all your in-celebration Valentine's Day needs met. Tell that lovely man or woman whom you love deeply, Love enough to not take the dialysis. Love enough to beat and scream at. Love enough to piss in a bottle and make them clean it up. Tell them that they mean the world to you by buying them some overpriced merchandise from some YouTube guy who they have no idea who the fuck he is. Again, that's medicare.myshopify.com. So, when we last left off, Ralph the ladies' man <laughs> was teaching us how to keep a woman happy. Treated his mother well, treated his ex-wives and girlfriends well, treated his baby mom as well, treated his daughter well. If you're a female around Ethan Ralph, you are pretty much have a target on your back, it seems like. Of course, uh, I don't want the boys to feel left out. He loves his son very much. Like that 24-hour fundraiser he did where he got really fucking drunk and high and just passed out for five hours, not giving a shit. He needed to get a plane ticket to go visit his son, whom he loves, and then scammed his audience three times in a row Never got on a plane and just kept the money. Really riveting content. Master class in how to be a good parent. Calls his daughter a bitch. Doesn't give a shit about his son. A lovely guy. 
But why would she try to abscond? Ooh, such a fancy word. That's a big boy word. Why would she try to abscond with, uh, with his daughter like that? I wonder why. I don't know. You know, Ralph's got a habit of picking his wife and kids up drunk and then driving down the wrong street or the wrong way on the road. You know, dad of the year here. Doesn't just call his little kid a bitch. Probably wants to kill her by going 80 miles an hour into a wall. Let me show you an example of that. Double glass, double shot, um, limon, sin salt. So this is the earlier part of a stream he did over on DLive where he drank for about, I don't know, half an hour to an hour, just slamming back margaritas to go pick up the wife and kids. Margarita de limon, dos shots, broken. Yeah. school. My lights are automatic, nigga. What are you talking about? He just oh, it's because I'm going down the wrong way. Yeah. Oh, it's because I'm going down the wrong way. It's a one-way road, and I'm drunk, and I'm driving drunkenly down the wrong way in Mexico. Better go pick up my wife and kids. While I drunk drive the wrong way down the road, load him up in the back seat with no car seat. You know, I cut out some of the video in the earlier part of the video when he gets in his truck. You can see a liquor bottle in the fucking passenger seat or on the passenger side on the floor. There's good old dad of the year, Ethan Ralph, drunk driving the wrong way down the road in a country he's not born in, going to pick up his wife and daughter whom he loves dearly. Because that's how much he cares. He cares so very, very much. Oh, I wonder why she'd abscond with your daughter, Ralph fucking piece of shit oh now he didn't take that break up very well you saw he acted about nora <laughs> threatening to destroy her life uh, how did he react when uh you know when pansu left uh, what was his reaction to that one? Oh, you know typical ethan ralph got really drunk and made it you know <laughs> well I'll, I'll let the clip speak for itself so i guess i should just say it here as well but um me and Pansu have separated, which is different from a divorce, of course, um, for those who know. Um, we separated, and um, that's not a work. That's not a... Um, <laughs> Everything is through the, the lens of wrestling. I think I, he must have brain damage from some prior incident. I don't fucking know what it is. Maybe Ronnie hit him with a guitar. I don't know what happened to him in his childhood. <laughs> but he like he thinks he's in a wrestling show. Like he's stuck in the mindset that this is like WWE. And he's like the heel. I mean, it is kind of like wrestling if he wanted to go for a Benoit angle. Because that's kind of where he's going with this. But not like wrestling on TV wrestling. There's no joke behind that. I wish there was. Um, I think it's bullshit. I hate her whole fucking family. I hope they all burn in fucking hell. I hope they all burn in eternal damnation. Um, but... That's the that's the status. Um, God, can you can you imagine it? Like, put your put yourself in the place of the woman that's stuck living with this pig. Like, listen to him talk. He's just super obese. He's got like a brain damage slowness to the way he speaks. Uh, you know, constantly doing that shit. High off zannies, drunk off his ass. He pees in bottles. Probably no shame. He'll probably just drink a beer and then piss in the beer in front of you. And then he talks like this. And he's always wearing sunglasses. This has got to be some kind of like Geneva Convention um, restriction against this for torture. Like the world courts need to step in. I don't know. Except for, you know what? Like your grandmother and certain people like were actually good to me. And her grandfather. Like, Anonymous sent $10 suffer horse. Yeah, yeah, he suffer horse. I don't know who that means. Now, check this out. Um, watch how quickly his personality changes. It just turns on a dime. You've already seen a clip of it earlier. 
with that $20,000 thing. He was so happy. $20,000, Jim, you and I can wrestle. In seconds, he was fuming, seething angry. Now, look at this. He's talking about, oh, we separated. It's not really a divorce. He seemed a little sad about it. And now, now he hears the phrase, suffer horse, and watch how quickly, look at the sneer on his face. I guarantee you that's the look he has on his face when he's slapping a bitch. Yeah, it's your time. It's your day. This is your day. Huh? Huh? Cunt? Cunt? This is your day. Did you want a day? Well, you got one, bitch. Did you want a fucking day? You got one, cocksucker. Did you want a day? This is your day. This is the day of the horse. The day of the horse has come. Are you ready, cocksucker? Instantly, on a dime. Just instantly. Just look at him. Look, look at the brain damage. Here's a, just here's a couple clips of just brain damage Ralph. I can easily let those go. Like, um, but... For everybody that thought Rakeda did it first, no, I'm sorry, Nick. That was Ralph's gimmick first. All right, you want to talk about somebody two fists and glasses? Ralph was the one that came up with that first. The ladies' man himself. I wonder, remember, he's got uh, headmates. So every time you see, whenever you see Ralph silently sitting there, not saying anything, it's not dead air. Because in his head, he's hearing things. He's hearing things that never stop talking to him. Other little Ethan Ralphs are talking to him right now. You gonna take that from that bitch, Ralph? Grab those two liquor glasses and drink them. You gonna let them treat? Don't you let them big leak you, boss. You earned that Modelo. Yeah, you take those Zannies, piggy. It's your day, big boy. That's what he's hearing. Non-stop. Non-stop. It never ends. It never, ever ends. <laughs> and that, of course, brings us to our more, uh, you know, recent, uh, what, do, what do we want to call this? How, how do we explain this? I mean, I wouldn't really say girlfriend, because she was only with him for about two weeks. Well, I guess he's speed running, ruining relationships. With the past ones, it was at least, you know, a few months to a year. But uh, with Denny, if I'm saying Denny Soros, huh, I don't know how you say your username. But with her, it was only, I believe, two, maybe three weeks. Met a girl. Met a girl down in Mexico. Said he fell in love. Fell, fed, or fell uh, head over heels for her. Oh, boy. We know how that's going to end. Because I have, like, I have screen caps here that are literally listed as hooker killer. <laughs> oh, so, you know, it all starts with Ralph meeting a girl, falling in love, and going to meet her. Now, he was going to go meet her in an area that's a little spicy. It's a little, it's a little, uh, it's a little spicy for an American expat down there. Not the safest place to go. So, of course, Ralph thinks he's pulling a big old trick on people by saying he's going down to Taxo or Taxico or I don't know what the fuck they call it. But he's leaving his metal shed to go visit the girl. And instead, he decides he's going to Mexico City and he's going to make her go through a cartel war zone instead. Let me just, I, I want you to really understand that I'm not joking when I tell you this. There were reports of cartel violence in the area that Ralph wanted to go visit. And instead, because he's the world's biggest, fattest pussy, you know, the kind that would uh, threaten his wife and make her clean up piss bottles. Uh, he instead made her travel through a cartel war zone to visit him in Mexico City and then told everybody what a big baller he was. Big baller shot caller. Real Ric Flair. Woo! Look at the wrestler. Woo! Oh, he's out there wrestling, everybody. It's just, it's just wrestling. Come on, Denny. I need you to get on a mule and go through the cartel fucking war zone to come visit my big fat ass. I got piss bottles that need cleaning. Don't you give me a lip, girl. Otherwise, I'm going to put you in a body bag. <laughs> Woo! It's just like wrestling. Just like wrestling. 
Of course, things didn't go very well. <laughs> things didn't go really well. Ralph started tweeting all of a sudden saying things like, there's a coordinated effort by disgruntled women to try to get me. We've seen this before for 10 years. It won't work. Oh, no. Trouble in paradise, Honcho? What happened? I mean, you got your girl to come visit you down in, uh, in Mexico City. She went through the cartel war zone to come visit you because you're too much of a chicken shit to do it yourself. Took her out to the all, you know, to all the fancy restaurants that cost ten dollars. Big spender. I would have bored you with clips of this, but he literally took her out to the cheapest restaurants he could find. They were like ten feet from the hotel he rented. <laughs> you know, really impressing her, really showing her that he's, uh, you know, the big buku buck American guy. Uh, so apparently there's a plot against him. What plot exactly? Oh, oh, it turns out that uh, Denny uh, messaged Faith and uh, shared a little bit about her experience with Ralph. I'm very scared. Ralph tried to kill me. Luckily, I managed to get out. He is really crazy. He is a criminal and he does not deserve to be free. He is shameless. Yesterday, he almost killed me and he still has the nerve to poster about me. I just returned home and I realized that he's posting about me on Instagram to make me look bad. So his Mexican girlfriend, who traveled through the war zone, is accusing Ralph of trying to murder her. Now, I know you might be saying, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's hyperbole. She must be over-exaggerating. Do I need to play the audio again where he literally told uh, Pansu that he would kill her? Do you think that he hasn't uttered that phrase to a woman before where he said, I will fucking kill you? Because we heard him do just that. So now here she is saying, he told me, this fat, crazy American just told me, he's going to fucking kill me. Uh-oh. Now, you know, <laughs> um, Ralph decided he needed to defend himself against these horrible women, all these Me Too women. I mean, look at all these horrible women that have come out against him. His mother, uh, his daughter, his first wife his second wife, the girl he dated, the woman that bore uh, his son, and now this Mexican girl, you know, all eight of these females that are all a part of this uh, conspiracy to get him. He needed to go and make a public statement about how these terrible Me Too lib shit women are making things up. All these women, all these girls that he encounters, every single one of them that he ever has a relationship of any kind with, uh, they're all making it up. So he decides to get drunk, of course, and high, of course, and do a Twitter space to defend himself. Where's the pictorial ambulance? Where's my ambulance? Oh, you're going to love this. So I could have done a, a, a stream if I was trying to, like, you know, make money off this, and maybe I will. Okay. You know how those uh, video clips earlier, I put the pill or the, uh, the clanking bottle sounds in for laughs? That wasn't me. This is really what he's like. Like, when you're listening to his audio, you'll hear clanking bottles. He really is this, but that's a piss bottle you hear under his desk. He literally kicked it over. So I was trying to, like, you know, make money off this. And maybe I will at some point. I don't know uh, if I end up doing my trip. But um, now, will I stay here? Will I go back to the U.S.? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. There's no evidence whatsoever for what's being claimed against me which is nothing new by the way um these people claim things without any evidence no photographs no witnesses no nothing okay well if there's evidence that i tried to kill you where's the photographs you know i i'm sure we've all been in that position uh out on the street maybe walking down a dark alley somebody pops out with a knife or a gun they're like, I'm going to fucking murder. You're dead. And you're like, wait a minute. I need to get my phone out and get some pictorial evidence. Because nobody's going to believe this happened. Without pictorial evidence, this never, ever did happen. But they have nothing except two harpies commiserating about how they got fucked by the Ralph Amell. I committed no crime here in Mexico. I did not try to kill anyone. There are no physical injuries at all. There are no witnesses at all because these things didn't happen. <laughs> you know, because usually when you threaten to murder a woman that you're abusing, you always make sure to do it out in public. That's a smart place to do it. Never, never happened. No pictorial evidence that it ever did happen. Clanking piss bottles everywhere. How surreal is this? What kind of life are you living, champ? You're in a metal shed in Mexico 
and you had to, you, you actually said the line, there's no evidence I tried to kill anyone. You were living in a metal shack in Mexico talking about how you were not trying to murder Mexican women. <laughs> what the fuck happened to your life? But when you get online, you can just say whatever the fuck you want. Okay, well, if you have something, show it. And, you know, making threats about how you know politicians and how you know judges down here and what you'll do to me. Uh, well, you still have to have evidence, and I'm still a United States citizen. So, um, nothing that, that's been said about me is true at all. I didn't do nothing. I'm a good boy. I'm innocent. I didn't do nothing at all. You know, this sounds real familiar. Again, very strange. Very strange that Ethan Ralph runs a show that has uh, a lot of people that come on from the right wing that talk about uh, race realism, talk about uh, black people and how black people are these violent savages that just out there raping white women, just abusive and terrible and doing all these terrible things. And they're a bunch of didn't do nothings. And they're on the show of a guy who's literally that stereotype. It's literally what they're talking about. Ralph has been accused of rape and abuse and death threats against women time and time and time again. And you'll go on to a show and you'll complain about black guys saying that they're doing it when the host you're talking to literally is on audio threatening to strangle his fucking wife. Am I in the twilight zone? Do I live in the twilight zone? What the fuck happened to the right wing? All these talking heads, these political pundits that keep going on his fucking show. And you know who you are. And you have the balls to talk to me and other people about race realism and nationalism and conservatism and the traditional nuclear family with a guy that's been on tape this many times treating his mother like shit, his girlfriend's like shit, his wife's like shit, his son like shit, his daughter like shit, sitting there drunk and high, unrepentantly so, grifting off Christ, grifting off fucking politics, grifting off everything. But you're such clout-chasing whores that you'll just close an eye to it. And I'm supposed to take you seriously? Slit your fucking throats. But what has been said is completely untrue. And the fact that you would team with Faith Vickers, I mean, says all it needs to be said, really. Um... You know, I'm 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 considering a few different things. Uh, I'm not gonna lie because it's like, you know, now it's like a sitting target uh, on my back or whatever. It's just two women. It's just two disgruntled women who I used to fuck, thinking they have me beat, or thinking that they're gonna scare me or whatever. Now, is it worth? Staying here in light of all that, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'll stick around. Maybe I'll stick around in the foreign country where I threatened a spicy Latina who told me she was going to fuck my shit up. I don't know if that's probably the smartest idea. He got very mad at uh, Josh Boone for saying, run. <laughs> run for the hills, you stupid fucking idiot. He got very mad about that. Like, oh, Josh trying to get me killed. No, nobody's trying to get you killed, idiot. You were literally in a foreign country. You're a guest in a foreign country. You're not even a resident there. You're not a citizen there. And you're, you're going around doing the shit you did in America over there. Somebody's going to do something about it. I wouldn't be sticking around, you dumb fucking idiot. What a moron. Maybe, maybe not. And if they weren't liars, well, where's, where's the pictorial evidence? If you try to kill somebody... Where is the evidence? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's clear what they're trying to do here. Um, I saw somebody in chat say Africa arc. Let me tell you what's going to happen if Ethan Ralph tries to go to Africa. He tries to find himself in South Africa or Sudan or Chad or just anywhere, anywhere on the continent of Africa. They're not going to stick you in an oil barrel like the cartel would. They're going to put tires around you, Ralph, light them on fire and kick you down a hill. I've watched those videos of what they do to people like you in Africa. <laughs> they will literally, it's a pig in a blanket. They're going to light you on fire inside of like three or four rubber tires and send your ass hurling down a hill at 100 miles an hour. And they're going to laugh. And I'm going to laugh. Everybody's going to laugh. It'll be on, well, Live Leaks doesn't exist anymore, but somewhere. 
I would not go to Africa. That's going to be even worse. And, you know, you have women bragging about their connections to Claudia Scheinbaum, the future Jewish president of Mexico. This, this is my favorite part. I, I actually, I love that he did this. Remember, Ralph is like a, I don't know, a chameleon? I, it, it's just, there's no true Ralph. All his politics are bullshit. He tells you he's conservative, but he votes for Obama. You know, he's, he's, he, it's just, there, there's nothing he says is true. But he likes to go back because a lot of his guests are idiots. And he'll go back and he'll harp on the Jew thing. So here he is talking. About, just listen to this. You understand what I'm saying? It's clear what they're trying to do here. Um, and, you know, you have women bragging about their connections to Claudia Scheinbaum, the future Jewish president of Mexico. Ah, Miss Scheinbaum. You know, those Mexican Jews, the lost 13th tribe. A lot of people don't really know about it. You're going to have to go ask Gabe Hoffman. He'll give you the uh, down low on the 13th tribe of Israel, the Mexicans. <laughs> Gloria Scheinbaum. Uh, Scheinbaum. Oh, uh, Miss Shekelstorm down there. Uh, you know, the Mexican Jew, 13th tribe member, coming to get him. Oh, got to watch out for those Mexican Jews. They're popping out everywhere. Oy vey. <laughs> uh, you know, the Hasidic Jews from New York tunneled their way all the way down to uh, fucking the Yucatan, apparently. And they're all out to get Ethan Ralph. You have people bragging about their family being judges. You have people bragging about their family being businessmen. Oh, no. I saw somebody in chat say, oh, well, she is Jewish. That's not my point. This is a fat American man that pays $400 a month to rent a metal shed. And he thinks the... Uh, a powerful Jewish politician, the future uh, president of Mexico, is personally coming for him. He's that psychotic. He's ingested so many Xanax that he thinks in his metal shed on his dirt street surrounded by stray dogs that a powerful cartel of Jews are coming to get him because he is the truth speaker. <laughs> Ethan Ralph the Xaniatic is the truth speaker, and only the most powerful of the 13th tribe can stop him. This sounds like a TV show. I think I've written a new TV show. It's AI TV. I've outdone AI. I've made a crazier plot than it could do. Okay. Well, um, I'm still a United States citizen. Uh, in no way did I attempt to kill anybody. I did not physically harm anyone. There is no pictorial evidence at all of that happening. Like, I mean, you know, a person accused me of trying to kill them. Where is the pictorial evidence? Where is the any type of evidence? I love how he says it, evidence. There's a video of this um, black dude who gets his shit rocked on a bus where he keeps saying, call the ambulance. Call the ambulance. And here's Ralph asking for the evidence. Oh, where's that evidence? I need, I need my evidence. With almost no issue. The only thing is, I have two cats here. And I care more about these cats than I do, like, <laughs> anybody or anything. Oh, see, this is a part where I should have, like, um, had the clips ready to go where a childhood friend of his said that Ethan Ralph murdered puppies. <laughs> how f I, I mean, you know, that's how all serial killers start, right? It probably would have made sense in the flow of how things are going. But I can't confirm if that's not complete bullshit or not. But some dude made the claim that made Ralph go fucking retarded with rage. And it was somebody he knew from his childhood that claimed that Ethan Ralph used to hang puppies over chairs and that him and his dad cooked them in ovens. And then Ralph, I, I swear to God, there's like a clip out there of Ralph saying, no, no, my dad and I only wanted to warm the dogs up in the oven. We weren't trying to cook them. <laughs> wow. Uh, attempted murder has, like, pictorial evidence. It has witnesses it has just anything besides two disgruntled women gossiping amongst each other don't don't you know oh what this 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 order oh i have a dvro against faith vickers oh here's a fun fact for people wondering what's a dvro that's a domestic violence restraining order and that's not the only one he has. 
Ralph has multiple restraining orders against him, some of them normal restraining orders, others domestic violence restraining orders. You know, for women like uh, Faith, for women like Aid, just, you know, other women, other women, you know, they're all lying whores, though. We uh, can't forget that. They're, it's just a, it's a collective, uh, uh, you know, a collective of women me tooing him. He's an innocent baby boy. He didn't do nothing. Show him to evidence. He's an innocent little baby kissed by cherubs right on his fat little fucking cheeks. You need to get the evidence. All those domestic violence restraining orders, those are all bullshit. Ethan's an innocent boy. With Faith Vickers, by the way, I signed that willingly. I admitted to zero crimes during that DVRO because I did not commit any crimes. <laughs> I did plead no contest to revenge porn. That's true. I, com I committed no crimes except for the sex offense of revenge porn. I, you know, I signed that domestic violence restraining order against my ex, uh, you know, who, who bore my child uh, because I'm completely innocent. And of course, when you're completely innocent, you're always going to sign a domestic violence restraining order. And I committed no crimes except for the crime of revenge pornography, where I released a video of myself eating shit out of her ass. Oh, by the way, he eats shit. A real winner here. I wonder if Denny got around to that yet. Maybe, maybe that's what started the fight. We don't know what started the fight and the fallout. Maybe she was like walking down the street after they had some delicious tortas, and all of a sudden she felt the wind, what she thought was the wind, but it was really Ethan Ralph hunched over on his little piggy hoofs, trying to sniff her butt, truffle hunting for his next chocolate treat. Oh yeah, man, I, I can't lie. I can't lie about that. Well, I say bring it on. That's what I say. Or let it go. Because the only way to take me off these fucking airwaves is to fucking kill me or lock me up for life. Oh, tempting fate again there, champ. I don't know if we want to go around saying the only way to take me out is to kill me. Uh, you'll find out in a moment why that was a stupid statement to make. But that's Ethan Ralph, our ladies man, teaching us the, the way to woo the women on this in celebration early Valentine's Day special. And of course, we've got, you know, uh, Piggy on the run. We don't know, is he going to stay in Mexico? Is he going to go back to the United States? Is he going to go to South America, maybe Africa? We don't know. I don't know. Where is he going to go? Who knows? He's just he's, he's out there evading the law. A little a little Piggy's out there truffle hunting. Oh, Danny, let me smell your butt. Oh, I want to bury my snout up your shit. Oh, oh truffle hunting. I'm going to drive drunk down a one-way street, call my daughter a bitch, and choke my wife. Let me eat shit out of your butt. That's not a crime, except it's a crime when I release the videotape. Uh, I'm Ethan Ralph. Shruffle hunting, woman abusing pig. Hybrid monstrosity from America. Can't stop me. I want to I wanna take a gander down under. I want to savor the flavor of your shithole, honey. Ooh-wee! Ethan Ralph. It's just like wrestling. It's just like wrestling. Now, of course, all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, after Ralph, you know, they, they, they have this uh, breakup. She talks about him wanting to kill her. But then all of a sudden he starts putting up tweets and doing streams saying, oh, no, she's actually the world's perfect woman, and I was so wrong. The Ralph male was wrong. Oh, no, I, I'm, I love you. I love you. I was so wrong about it. I love you. You might be wondering why that is. Oh, might have something to do with this. Um. And so I know that like things were going pretty south for Ralph for, for a while. And uh, there were some issues. Medicare covered it. He was pretty funny about it. And then they covered it and they kind of beat it to death. To oh my God, that guy was pretty funny about it. I agree. I'm not sure who you are, but I agree with that gentleman. That Medicare guy is a funny individual. Where I just stopped caring, uh, I would say, is what happened. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Um, yeah. So my mom. And then he went to Mexico um and uh last i saw he had some hot latina chick um and things were looking pretty good so i uh was like oh cool you got a hot latina chick i got a hot latina chick cool i like yeah i like hot latina chicks right um and uh he goes well things are actually not going so good in that department i'm like really i'm sorry <laughs> I, I i'm okay okay you're gonna love this part chat um Listen to this really carefully. This is what Ethan Ralph told this dude in confidence. And this explains why Ralph suddenly has become a good little boy who kept his fat little mouth shut. 
Just listen to this. Literally, I what a honest engine uh, am not uh, not following the drama. I had no clue. And um, he said uh, that she uh, is now alleging that he tried to kill her and that she has potentially some cartel connections and Whoa. he's very scared and might be fucked. <laughs> and he told me this in DM. So, so to recap, <laughs> to recap this, let me put the perfect picture up. Jesus Christ. There we go. Ethan Ralph, stupid, fat American expat, high off his ass on Zannies and liquor, meets a Latina chick, thinks she's a spicy hot tamale. He's going to go down there and woo her. Makes her cross cartel country to come visit him because he's too much of a pussy and too broke to visit her. She comes out to see him. They have a fight probably because he tried to sniff her butt. And then he starts going off on social media about how she's a whore and she's, uh, you know, working with other whores in his life and all women are liars and he never did anything wrong. He never threatened to hurt her. She's talking about how he threatened to kill her and all this other crazy shit. But Ralph is like, that never happened. I'm a good boy. And then in DMs, suddenly there's a bot face and then in DMs, he's telling everybody the cartel is hunting his fat little ass across Mexico. Amazing. <laughs> what a fucking moron. Oh. What an idiot. Ralph, what the hell has happened to your life? You know, it's all the result of the things that you've done, right? You can't blame it on other people. You host a show where you talk shit about everybody's family, about everybody and everything they've ever done. You call it entertainment. You say it's wrestling. And you say everything's fair game. And then when people look at your life, the life that you live, and the fuck-ups you make, you get enraged about it. You become furious and seethe about it, because that's suddenly off-limits. You call people's wives whores, their children retards. I mean, shit, Nick Ricada, I have no idea how he forgave you. It's not just that you called his wife a whore. You called Nick Ricada's kids like fucking, re re what was it, fucking retards? Like you attacked his children. I don't know how Nick is going to explain that to him when they're older. Like, Dad, why would you let this fat, woman-abusing pig talk shit about us and then be friends with him? What the fuck is the matter with you? Like, what the fuck are you thinking? But you go on and on about people, and then look at your life. Every single woman you've encountered, Ralph. Now, if I ask chat, I bet you there are people that have had terrible relationships, men and women, where they've had bad breakups, the people they were with were psychopaths, they lied about them. I'm sure that shit happens all the time. Me Too stuff, I'm sure some of it's bullshit. But it's every woman ralph it's every single woman you've had any interaction with is all saying the same fucking thing you're not rich or famous idiot you're not some big hollywood producer there's no fucking price on your head you're not a mover or shaker you're not a power broker they're not going to get shit out of it but yet every one of them has the same fucking story ex-wives ex-baby mamas ex-girlfriends ethan was physically mean verbally mean sexually abusive they say it over and over and over. You get recorded on audio saying it yourself. You say it on stream unrepentantly. You call your daughter a bitch. You don't give a shit about your son. You treated your mom like dog shit. And then you get huffy and puffy and you get mad at people when they talk about it. You're a fucking idiot. The misery that you're living is what you brought upon yourself. You live in a mech, <laughs> you live in a metal shack in a third world country hiding from America. You talk shit about America now because you can't really come back to it. You'll get brought in for civil litigation. You'll get brought in for other shit. Who fucking knows? And now you can't even stay in Mexico because you dated some chick and treated her like dog shit. And now you're legitimately scared she's got cartel connections or she knows politicians. You better hope she was just bullshitting you to shut your fat ass up and make you fuck off. But eventually, Ralph, you're going to fuck with the wrong one. You're going to pick some chick and you're going to fuck with the wrong one. And they will put you in an oil barrel. And they will film it and put it on the internet. Put a little hat on you. <laughs> put a little sombrero on you, Ralph. And stick you in an oil barrel. And you will have nobody to blame but yourself. Your life is misery because you made it misery. You are in poverty because you chose to make yourself fall into poverty. Because you don't take care of financial responsibilities. I mean, you need to be babysat. I don't think, have you ever lived by yourself? 
Have you always had to have a woman take care of you? You lived with your mother till you were in your 30s. You got immediately with a girl. You made her take care of you. Dumped her. Got another one to take care of you. Dumped her. Got another one to take care of you. You're near middle age. You're halfway through your life, Ralph. And you've never taken care of yourself. And when you take care of yourself, you end up in a metal shack eating tortoise. In a third world country. <laughs> what the fuck happened to you? Did you not ever learn how to be a man, Ralph? What it means to take care of yourself, to be responsible financially, to be dependent, to be a rock for your family to lean upon? That's what you're supposed to be. Not, you know, telling women to clean your piss bottles up and calling your daughter a bitch. Not driving drunk down the wrong way of the fucking street in a third world country because you don't give a shit about their safety. All you care about is how high you can get and how good that'll feel. You know, most of my streams are supposed to be lighthearted, but Jesus Christ, you make that difficult, don't you? All these people trying to save you talking about a redemption arc? You're undeserving. You're undeserving, Ralph, of redemption. Leave, uh, leave redemption to God. Maybe God will forgive you, Ralph. But I think humanity as a whole has probably had enough of your shit. You aren't Ric Flair. This isn't wrestling. This is real life. You treat people like dog shit, and you're going to die alone. <laughs> and that's really sad. You're going to die alone in a metal shack, Ralph. And you chose that. That's the future you chose. And the people that openly associate with you after seeing all of this and hearing all of this are con men and grifters. And they shouldn't be given any opportunity to spread their bullshit because they don't believe in it. You are a fucking circus sideshow. That's it. That's all you are. That's what you amounted to. A circus sideshow. Some people pity you, but really that's just a fear they have internally because they don't want to end up like you. They're, they're scared they're at the edge and they may slip and become you. And so they show you a little bit of mercy because they want mercy later on. That's the whole thing that's going on when they talk about redemption arc. You're irredeemable, and you don't deserve it. So that is Ethan Ralph, ladies' man. Sorry if I got a little heavy there in a few points, uh, chat. You know, who, who am I to speak here? I'm just, just a guy on the internet watching a fat fucking American expat make an ass of himself continually. But there's a point. I think there's a point where it just happens so many times that you have to really just concede that it's probably true. I know you want to have a dance, Ralph. Like CCTV footage of you strangling a whore or something. I'm sorry I can't give you that a dance. But I think at this point when eight different women, well, seven women and a girl that you called a bitch who's your daughter for no reason. I think when you add all those up, that's pretty good a dance. It starts to show maybe a pattern of behavior, Ralph. A repeatable pattern of behavior that shows that maybe your personality is shit and you're fucking flawed and... Just not fixable. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. If only, if only you'd listen to the sweet, dulcet tones of Coach Red Bill. Who even, you know, CRP, with his all women or dogs, yeah? I, but Ralph, like, even, even as fucked up as that is, with his whole red pill pickup lady, pickup artist shit, even he uh, never talked about fucking hitting women or treating them like that oh when he talked about his family he talked about them with love i mean he may have been an idiot and his advice may have been terrible but i don't remember him ever saying beat your dog when he said women were dogs i mean we could watch it again let's double check here like dogs now what do i mean you have to treat them like you would treat a dog you ever go up to a dog and you're afraid of the dog and the dog senses it and the, and the dog gets up and smells the fear coming off of you and starts barking at you and snarling at you and showing its teeth and it's pissed off at you and doesn't like you. And you're like all insecure and tentative, like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, hi, can, can I get you a drink? I, I, I just want to be friends, please don't bite me. And what's that woman gonna do? She's gonna snarl at you. She's gonna look at you like, ew, creepy, ew, rough. If you're firm and self-confident, they respond. They get relaxed, see, just like dogs. You go up to a dog, you know, a big, mean Doberman pincher, right? Or, or, or whatever, some Germanic, uh, what's a Rottweiler, right? Or a pit bull, you know? You go up to that dog, you know, and he's like, hey, don't fuck with me, dog. So that's what you have to do. You have to treat women like dogs. 
See, Ralph, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember saying treat him like shit. Everybody, everybody loves the doggo, Ralph. Uh, maybe you know, God, you're like the anti CRP, aren't you? He wanted you to treat him like dogs, and you hung dogs. He wanted you to give him a nice food bowl of, uh, you know, a bowl of water and food. You wanted to stick him in an oven with Ronnie. I guess that's the difference. I guess CRP was just a better human being than you, Ralph. <laughs> Fucked up is that? Woo! Oh, it's just wrestling, Ralph. Don't get mad. It's just wrestling. We're just wrestling out here. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So, well, I mean, that's my that's my incel dumb stream. That's my that's my in celebration stream. You know, there just comes a point when you put it all together and you look at it chronologically. It's all lined up. There's just it's too much. It's too much, you know, like, you're, uh, you know, it's just, it's too many women, Ralph. It's just too many fucking women all saying the same thing. Now I've been told, or I saw, I should say earlier that uh, Denny might have watched the stream in which case, um, best of luck to you. Stay away from Ethan Ralph. I hope this was educational for you. Tell your friends to stay away from Ethan Ralph. Uh, cause he's just, he's a giant fat baby. He's a poop eating baby. Ethan Ralph is a poop-eating baby that pisses in bottles. <laughs> and it's not somebody that you want to associate with. You could do so much better. All right? Just look at the guy. I, I don't know. Was it like a pity thing? Maybe it was like a joke thing? I, I don't know. But boy, that, I would just stay far away from him. I don't, I, you know, like, maybe, was it like a, did you guys have things in common? He's got really big tits. Do you have big tits? Maybe you share bras? Maybe like, oh, this American man's got fancy American bras. He can borrow me because he's got such large titties because he's fat. I don't know. Like, what did you guys have in common? If I could have interviewed you, that probably would have been my first question, is do you share bras together? <laughs> and then what does he smell like? Because it's been reported that his breath smells like tampons. Oh, God. That must have been terrible. No wonder he keeps shoving tortoise down his face, hoping the, uh, like, uh, I don't know, the tomatoes will mask the smell tampon breath four titted fucking gunted pig man and his giant american titties smell like tampons god damn it's rough out there for a girl <laughs> oh that felt nice that was fun i i had fun with that chat which which where's my uh-oh where's my my ethan ralph oh is that on the run i've got so many different on somebody went to the trouble of making all these ai pictures of ralph just running from the police and skating. He's the only American trying to break in from Mexico. You know what I mean? Like he's going the opposite way. So this is weird thing that confuses border control. Nobody really knows about, but there's just so many pictures. They're all fantastic. AI is just great. Whipping this shit up on there. That shit would have taken forever to draw by hand. Make your computer do it for you. Fantastic. Now I've got some uh, super chats here. I, I know I'm demonetized on YouTube. How to do it through Ko-Fi and, uh, what is it, Cash App? But I will read those. We'll take another small break and get into those. For everybody else that came out for this in celebration, thank you for coming. I hope this Lonely Fucks Valentine stream has been educational for you and taught you how to woo the ladies. Remember, the tips and tricks of the secret of the, or in the secrets of the sector are as follows. Um, scream at women. Abuse women. Uh, tell women they're liars. Uh, rape and molest women. Uh, treat them like shit if they're your progeny. Uh, treat them like shit if they're your, uh, you know, if it's a, like a uh, matriarchal relationship with your mom. Uh, deny ever doing anything wrong. Demand evidence at every turn. Feel free to threaten their lives whenever you want. Even if you're caught on tape, just deny that it ever happened. Um, everybody's a, a whore that has a vagina. Uh, you're the ultimate uh, sensation that's ever existed. Even though you may be obese and smell like tampons and have four tits and two stomachs. And even though you've been uh, verifiably caught on tape eating poop. Um, you are the center of the universe and every woman should throw themselves at you or their vagina should instantly explode into a stream of wetness just at the mere sight of your visage uh, because you are uh, everything there is and will be. That is, that's the secret of the sector. That's, that's my tips and tricks for you on how to net yourself a lady. Okay? You go out there and you win a woman over and if you can't win her over, you just smack her. <laughs> you hit her and you call you said bish Ethan Ralph don't tolerate this bish and you get any shit from anybody I'm not kidding you folks you listen real close now you get any shit from anybody 
yeah, if you're a, if you're, you're a chick trying to get a guy, if you're a guy trying to get a chick, and they give you shit, I want you to verbatim. I want you to verbatim tell them you're going to come on their grave. And um, they talk about, about me jacking off to N Nikki Haley. I'm going to jack off on your fucking casket, you cocksucking son of a bitch. And you ain't going to be able to do shit about it. Do you understand? I'm going to come nut all over your fucking grave. Do you understand? And if your mom is dead by then, I'm going to come on her grave, too. I'm, I'm going to come all over your grave, and I'm going to come all over her grave. That's what I'm going to do to you and your mother. And you can't stop me. I'm the best quarterback in the league. It's not against the law. Nick Rakina told me that wasn't against the law. Nick Rakina told me that wasn't against the law. Do you understand? Nick Ricada told me I could come on your grave. Nick Ricada told me I could just jack off on your corpse. That's it still. <laughs> and then he pointed to Nick Ricada's YouTube channel so he gets really confused. Why are all these people why are all these people complaining to me about me giving out advice to masturbate on graves? I never said that to anyone. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> okay. So for those of you that sent in uh, uh, super chats via uh, Ko-Fi. And Super Chats for, or via Cash App. I'm going to read them here. Uh, let me just uh, go get another drink. We'll do a small break. Get back to that. Everybody else that came out, I hope you had a good time. Enjoy your actual Valentine's Day. Enjoy time with your loved ones and your family or your significant other. I'm sure you're all well-adjusted people that understand that Ethan Ralph is just a disgusting little pig man. <laughs> disgusting little pig man uh, that should never be taken seriously. So let's put up the break video that's going to actually play the right audio. And we'll come back in about five minutes, do the Super Chats, and then close it out. For everybody else, it's going to take off. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, and have a great upcoming Valentine's Day.